This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Tonight's weather night for high school football here at Crestwood Field. The Bulldogs about to take on the Comets of Crestwood in the Berwick home opener. 19th meeting between the two schools. Berwick leads the series 14 to 4, but as I mentioned, it was all Crestwood last season, 35 nothing here at Crispin Field. Here's the starting lineup offensively for the Comets. That's tight end number 12, Magnus Bibla. He is a 6'1", 185-pound junior. Has a brother that also plays. Lincoln Bibla will see some action at fullback. He's a freshman. And they come from a great football family. In fact, their father, Martin, is an assistant coach, but he was on a national championship team at Miami. Later spent some time in the NFL with uh, Atlanta. So good football heritage for these two Bibla brothers in the lineup for Crestwood. The left tackle, we talked earlier uh, about this line. It's big, it's experienced. Aiden Jardine starts at left tackle. He wears number 68. He's 6'3", 260 pounds, a junior. The left guard, a terrific college prospect, just a junior, number 72, John Jones. Six foot, 270 pounds. Chris Smolnick is the starting center. He is the lightest of the linemen with 225 pounds on his 5'11 frame. He is a junior. And then we have twin brothers at right guard and right tackle, respectively. They're both seniors. Zach Snyder, number 74, the right guard. Six foot, 250, a senior. And Josh Snyder, number 64, Six foot, 240 pounds, senior at the right tackle spot. At the wide receiver positions, number 10, Brendan Dennis. He's a 5'9", 160 pound junior. And number three, Robert Knight, a 5'9", 145 pound junior. We'll also see Bryce Beeney, number 11, 6'3", 160 pounds, a senior. The quarterback is Noah Schultz. He is a junior, 6'1", 170 pounds. Didn't play against Berwick last year, but played a lot of quarterbacking as their starting quarterback, Ryan Petrosky, who is now at Bloomsbury University, uh, suffered an injury that paved the way for, for Schultz. He is a very adept runner. Berwick concerned with that aspect of his game. They didn't go to the air a lot, just 11 passes against Williamsport. Schultz completed seven for 53 yards. With Caleb Benjamin not available for this game tonight, we'll see a lot of Ethan Shudak. He is a 5'10", 190-pound senior. 11 carries last week against Williamsport for 69 yards and a touchdown, including a 22-yard touchdown run. He may also see some fullback tonight. The two fullbacks we'll see when Shudak is the tailback are Lincoln Bibla. A freshman, 5'11", 195 pounds, wearing number 44. And Cole Kakalechik, number 32, a junior, 6 foot, 220 pounds. That is the starting lineup offensively for the Comets of Crestwood under Ryan Archangeli in his third season as head coach. They come in 0-1 after that season-opening loss to Williamsport. For the Bulldogs of Berwick, at the tight end, we'll see number four, Spencer Kishbaugh, 6'3", 195 pounds, junior. When Berwick goes with double tights, we'll see Taji Taylor, number eight, a 6'3", 200-pound senior. At the left tackle, number 73, Gavin Cunningham, 6'2", 210-pound senior. The left guard, number 78, Liam Carroll, 5'8", 190 pounds, a sophomore. Bruce Hartman is the starting center. He wears number 65. He is a 6'1", 215-pound junior. Chase Shuckers, just a ninth grader, is the starting right guard. Chase wears number 60. He's 5'11", 220 pounds. The right tackle is number 70, Xander Unger. He is 6'3", 265 pounds, a senior. At the wide receiver positions, we'll see number 7, Dre Wilk, 5'11", 175 pounds, junior. A couple of pass receptions that opener at Southern Columbia last Friday. We'll also see number 20, Braden Boone, a senior. 5'10", 145 pounds. And number six, Rowan Slabinski, a 6'3", 200-pound junior. 
The quarterback for the Bulldogs, number 12, Matt Lunzinski. He is 6'1", 205 pounds of junior. Saw some action against Crestwood last year when Benny Noor, the starter, was injured early on. Last week at Southern Columbia, Matt completed five of 13 passes, just 31 yards, and he was under a lot of duress. Bulldogs hoping they can protect better in this one this evening. At the running back spot, we'll see number five, Ryan Bankins. 5'7", 150 a junior. He put on a good show last week. Had a 32-yard run in the first half against Southern Columbia's first-line defense. Ended the game at 19, carries 63 yards. Runs very hard for a guy that's only 150 pounds. We'll also see Benny Noor in a number of positions. Maybe tailback, maybe wingback, maybe in the slot. He's that versatile. He's a 5'11", 190-pound senior. Again, he was one of four seniors that uh, had to sit out last week with COVID protocols. Fullback, well, before the night's out, we're going to see number 16, Aiden Mason. He is a senior, 5'11", 212 pounds. Bulldogs really feel that he's important to any success they're going to have this season. And if he's ready to go, he's likely to get the numerous carries in this one this evening. So that is the starting lineup offensively for the Bulldogs under Carmen DeFrancesco in his third season as head coach. 10 and 9, his record at Berwick. Overall, 162 and 106. This is his sixth team for which he is the head coach. Berwick against Crestwood. We'll take a look at the keys to tonight's game. When we return, you're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio, HLM. It's the Labor Day sales event all month long. So that means you can get a fantastic deal at Fairfield Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. And between their two locations, they have whatever car, truck, or SUV you're looking for. Find it at Fairfield. Stop in and take a look at the newly redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Ready for on- and off-road trails with plenty of room for people and packages. Drive home a brand new 2021 Jeep Renegade, just 25-7. Or how about a 2021 Ram 2500, just 47.5. Check out their ad in the Web Weekly this week for more incredible deals. Stop in and see the Kaiser Boys on Route 405 in Muncie or Dan Goldman on Route 11 in Danville. Fairfield for fantastic deals. Offers on select vehicles for qualified buyers only. Not all will qualify. Must finance through Chrysler Capital. All offers end September 30th. See dealer for complete details. Neighbor Fence Company has fencing for where you want it. Serving Columbia, Montour, and Luzerne Counties. Neighbor Fence provides top quality residential and commercial fencing. Vinyl, chain link, wood, aluminum, and ornamental fencing. Plus, vinyl railing and specialty products. Neighbor Fence Company, 1140 State Route 239 in Wapwalpin. Call 570-752-4423 or visit them online at NeighborFenceCompany.com. Neighbor Fence Company is a proud sponsor of local youth athletic teams. Northeast Pennsylvania is your home. And no matter what stage of life you find yourself in, what you rely on most is security. When that house becomes a home, the moment you get that new car, when your dreams become a reality, it's times like this when you have to look to the experts for advice and financial peace of mind. They're there with innovative products and services to help you with your financial future every step of the way. Together, they will help dreams and goals become reality. They are more than a bank. They're your neighbor. They are First Keystone Community Bank. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Sunshine broke through the clouds just moments ago. It's going to be a terrific night for watching high school football here at Crestwood Field as the Bulldogs go against the Comets of Crestwood. Keys to tonight's game, Andy Lickney. Well, Berwick D has to be able to stop the run, Jimmy. That's its first priority. Uh, you highlighted how good this offensive line is. The five linemen uh, weigh them all up on the scale, 1,245 pounds. You can see. Divided by five, you can do that math just about in your head. 249 pounds per man. That's big for high school. And they're experienced. A lot of these guys played at sophomores. Three are juniors this year. Two are seniors. And they know what they're doing within this system. And it's a team that wants to be able to control things on the ground. 
So the challenge is there for Berwick against the offensive front and the blocking. The question is, who will they be stopping? Uh, we mentioned Caleb Benjamin is out. This is a non-football type of uh, situation. Uh, they like him running. He was the leading rusher for them. He's, he's the guy they projected to start, but he's not there. You mentioned Ethan Shudak did a nice job, 69 yards, a touchdown of 22 yards within those last week against a good Williamsport team. But I think they want to add a little bit more. And one of the wrinkles that's been rumored is that we might see the quarterback, Noah Schultz, run. And not necessarily from the quarterback position. There's a good feeling that they're going to bring in a wide receiver, Brendan Dennis, move him to quarterback so that they can use Noah Schultz more as a true running back within their system. Now, we'll see how much does it matter which one's running, who's getting the carries, the strong line, you open the holes, usually anyone can run well. And uh, Berwick, though, defensively, you heard Coach Argantulli mention, they really drive to the football, they get a lot of hats on that ball, they meet at the football, very good at that. But are they going to be moved out at the point of attack? The one thing that uh, Coach uh, R.D. Francesco is looking at is rotating a lot of the defensive front. Keep the defensive tackles as fresh as they can. Work your defensive ends. And hope your linebackers can stay tough with it. In fact, they kind of flipped Tristan English to a middle linebacker spot. And Alex Hacker is going to take his defensive end spot. They think that can make the defense a little bit stronger. But it's going to have to be strong to slow down this running game, and that's the key for the Berwick defense. Offensively, you know, it's hard to say with Berwick because we didn't really see their offense. We saw a version of it, and we saw a real nice version with Ryan Bankus running the ball. He truly impressed me in the game against Southern Columbia. Came off big, looked strong. But their projected starters are back. You know, we're going to be looking now at Benny Knorr and Aiden Mason in the backfield together. This is what they've looked at. These guys are experienced. Aiden Mason, we've talked about him since he was a freshman. Benny Knorr started a quarterback last year, and he ran so well they needed his legs. They moved him to running back. So what happens in there? So they're hoping to get that going along with probably the quick passing game is what they showed in their scrimmage, and it seems they like to get that ball sideways and use the talents of Dre Wilk and Benny Knorr when you flank him out and use the big tight ends as well. So mixing the short passing with the running game, the offensive line is going to have to take another step from the experience they gained last week against Southern Columbia to make it go. Uh, we know Crestwood's going to come in with a rather strong defense. A lot of players returned from last year's team over there. Uh, an interesting crew are the, the Bibla brothers. Magnus is the, the junior, and Lincoln, just a freshman. Uh, you mentioned their dad. Uh, he played in the NFL for at least eight years, played the national championship Miami. He's helping coach the team. And these guys have the genes to be strong hitters, and when you can start for Crestwood as a freshman, as Lincoln Bibla is, as one of the inside linebackers, you can see that the, the stock is there. No, along with a lot of other good players. So not sure what to expect out of the offense now that it's sort of uh, going to be a little re more resurgent with more people in it. We'll see how it goes. It's a bit of a surprise in this one with the personnel. We'll be seeing some for the first time. Yeah, and I think if Berwick can do what you suggested, and to use people, particularly linemen, just one way, it will help because it's going to be a, a long night with the big boys averaging 250 pounds a man leaning on them. If they can stay fresh and stay active on that defensive line, then they have a shot. Yeah, and you'd like to see a few three and outs, too, and then try to control things offensively where you're not being smashed by that big line as often. So, yeah, there'll be some with schemes, and there'll be some where the personnel just has to step it up and take on the challenge of taking on some bigger players. Now, there may not be a Derek Berlick on this Crestwood team, the outstanding defensive end from uh, Southern Columbia, but they need more time to the Bulldogs for quarterback Matt Lonsinski. He was under duress for most of that season opener. He got to the point where he couldn't even throw, getting it and turning and throwing because Berlitz happened to be on the side they wanted to throw. He'd be in that backfield turning toward the quarterback and getting the hands up, and you just couldn't arch the ball in or, you know, throw the quick pass the way you wanted. Uh, and, you know, Berwick, too, you know, going against a, a more human type of defense here at Crestwood that Southern was showing, 
you know, if you can establish the run game and then get the passing game going from it, do a little play action, be less predictable when you're running, when you're forced to pass on third down, that certainly helps the offensive continuity. It's an interesting matchup tonight because of who these teams opened with. You mm. say, well, Berwick lost handily. Yes, but they lost to the four-time defending state champions. Yep. Crestwood lost rather handily, but they lost to a Williamsport team that is loaded this season. Yeah, and it, it, it's tough to judge, but you also made the point, Jim. Someone's coming out at the end of this game 0-2. And for teams that have high expectations, like a Berwick program always does, like a Crestwood program has for the last decade or so, 0-2 just doesn't cut it, and yet someone's going home 0-2. Uh, they, they need to step up. And then you have to look, you know, mentally, how do you respond after taking on those buzz saws? After, you know, all your preseason work, all your weight lifting, all the... The, the, the hot August practices and then the scrim and then finally getting on the field and boom, you know, you're, you're beaten pretty soundly by very good teams. It's tough to bounce back to that. And I, I think Berwick might have a little advantage with players who didn't play coming into the, onto the field. You know, they didn't really experience that. I mean, you feel it with the team, but, uh, you know, you can come in with maybe a little bit of a better morale than some other teams who've, uh, you know, been mercy -bulled. The Comets against the Bulldogs in Berwick's home opener. We'll be back to kick it off. You're listening to Berwick Football and Sports Radio, HLM. Blaze Alexander here, and I'm getting ready for hunting season with my dog, Lyle. Lyle and I don't want you getting stuck in the woods with your old truck. So why not come into one of our dealerships and check out all these different brands of trucks that we have for you. The all-new Ford Ranger, Ram, Nissan Titan, Gladiator, F-150, Chevy, Heavy Duty, Colorado, GMC, Toyota Tacoma, Toyota Tundra. See them all today at blazetrucks.com. That's right. We'll always offer the lowest price guaranteed or we'll pay you a thousand bucks. Yannick Real Estate is your full-service real estate agency. Buying, selling, residential, commercial, multifamily, land, and rental management. Call Yannick Real Estate. Owner Mike Yannick, a veteran himself, served his country and has been serving this area for decades. Mike and his staff will guide you through the real estate process. Veterans, be sure to check the VA loan options. Yannick Real Estate, your full-service real estate agency. 1232 West Front Street in Berwick. Call 759-3300. Riverview Block of Berwick with over 75 years of service can handle all your block and concrete needs. They carry all sizes of concrete block, including decorative E.P. Henry landscaping block. Their concrete is PennDOT approved and delivered with front discharge trucks. Riverview Block also carries masonry supplies, tools, cement, sand, and stone. For prompt delivery, call Riverview Block, 570-752-7191. Riverview Block is proud to support the Berwick Bulldogs. Berwick Notary Center, 1544 Orange Street, State Route 93, has been serving the Berwick community for over 50 years with the highest quality service as well as the lowest prices available. They offer services for driver's licenses, instant camera cards, registration renewals, boat, ATV, and snowmobile transfers. And they are messenger and agent approved. Open Monday through Friday, 9 till 5, and Saturday, 9 till 1. Check out their Facebook page or email them directly at berwicknotary at yahoo.com. Berwick Notary proudly supports the Berwick Berwick Bulldogs. Go Dogs! Berwick Bulldog Football. HLM. If you haven't been to name brand liquidations in the Burke Plaza Shopping Center, you're missing out on great values. At name brand liquidations, you'll save money from 50 to 90% on everything imaginable. From furniture to food to bedding, you name it. Name brand liquidations not only sells a huge variety of merchandise, they feature name brands just like their name says at low prices. When you're in the market for anything, shop at the store that has everything. Name brand liquidations. Wishing the Burke Bulldogs a great season. S.J. Kowalski Heating and Air Conditioning is proud to offer the Air Scrubber by Aris. It reduces exposure to common bacteria and viruses and their health effects. Air Scrubbers don't just treat the air, they also help to clean the surfaces of your home, such as countertops, bathrooms, kitchens, and doorknobs. The Air Scrubber is quick and easy, designed to fit into your existing HVAC system. Learn more by calling 1-888-Kowalski or on the web at sjkowalski.com. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. 
Thomas and Crestwood making their way on the far side of the field wearing their white jerseys, white pants, red numerals, red helmets, and trim. Bulldogs have made their appearance on the near side of the field. Dark blue jerseys, white numerals, white pants, white helmets with the paw print on the side. The both teams have made their appearance. We're a couple of minutes away from the start of this home opener for the Bulldogs. The referee for tonight's game will be Jay Rowan. Mike Hartzell is the umpire. Chris Basic is the linesman. Line judge is Harry Kasky. Chad Obert is the side judge. And the field judge is Nick Coleman. I mentioned earlier, this is the 92nd year that Crispin Field has been home to Berwick football. And I'm going to have to get our uh, crack research department on this to see whether uh, Berwick's venue is the oldest in the state. There may be others. I don't know. But 92 has got to be up there. What year would that be, Jim, for the start of it? 1929. Shenandoah is about 1934. Yeah. You have some of those old schools. We were questioning Harmon Guy Stadium, but you thought maybe not as a football venue, maybe not even that old when it had its grandstand for baseball. But, yeah, you're right. Historic. Just a little background on the, this field. M. Crispin, or excuse me, M. Jackson Crispin donated the field to the school district. He did it in uh, honor of the memory of his father, the late Benjamin F. Crispin, who had served for many years on the Berwick School Board. The seating capacity was about 2,000 at the time, and at that time, it made it one of the largest in the state. Obviously, it's uh, much larger now. I think they go about 8,000, 8,500. Um, Berwick went on to, in that season of 1929 to go 10-1. They were led by uh, Berwick legend Leo the Ram Radimus, who went on to be a, a college All-American. So there's a lot wow. of history in this, this place. And, you know, over the years, Andy, I've heard more than one opposing coach say how exciting it was to come here. And, and usually you don't hear that about them going any <laughs> other place. No, no. I mean, it's always a different feel when you're, you're traveling, and often you feel at a little bit of a disadvantage. I actually like my teams being on the road. But uh, to step onto a field like this, or Mount Carmel, Silver Bowl, I know North Schuylkill players were making the comment how unique, the special feel. It, it sort of exudes the history of the place, the football legacy of those programs. And, Crispin Field, you've mentioned its, its longevity in that, but, but the association with George Curry and his career here, along with all of the great players. And Carmen Francesco, you mentioned yep. two venues. Well, he played at one, Silver Bowl, Mount Carmel. Now he's coaching in this one, so he's he's been around in some great places. Uh, Berwick won the toss. They deferred to the second half. So we'll get a chance to see that uh, power running offense by Crestwood to start. Anthony McDonald is the director of the Berwick band. They'll play the alma mater and then the national anthem, just the reverse to what we were told, but <laughs> nothing's going right here. Yeah, it's yeah, as old as anything. <laughs> 7 5 is dark. Yeah. Berwick against Crestwood. We'll be back with the kickoff. You're listening to Bulldogs Football and Sports Radio, HLM. See the winning lineup of Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram and quality pre-owned vehicles at Bear Chrysler Dodge Jeep in Ram and Berwick. They have a body shop and full service center servicing all makes and models, and they have been servicing your community for over 30 years. Bear Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram has earned the highest possible rating from Chrysler and the prestigious J.D. Power Award for Excellence. Bear Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram Pine Street in Berwick proudly supports the Berwick Bulldogs. Go Dogs! Every step of the way, First Columbia Bank. Any questions, ask them. Let's dream and make it happen. Time to feel the way a friend can make your day. For the big decisions, every step of the way. Your hometown bank, the first place to go. For your big time plans together will grow. Every step of the way, First Columbia Bank. 
The community of Berwick knows Bulldog Tough. So when it's time to remodel your garage or replace your overhead door, go with the quality doors and service the Red Ribbon represents. Look for the Red Ribbon logo. It's a symbol of 100 years of great doors, great installation, and great service. Give Overhead Door Company of Berwick a call, 570-759-3053, or visit their website at ohdberwick.com. Overhead Door Company of Berwick proudly supports the Berwick Bulldogs. Quality care for your dental health at Berwick Dental Arts, 105 West 9th Street in Berwick. State-of-the-art equipment comes together with a tradition of 45 years of personalized care. From the youngest to the oldest patient, let Berwick Dental Arts doctors and staff take care of every aspect of your dental needs. They'll process all types of insurances. Make your appointment today. Call Berwick Dental Arts friendly staff at 752-4542. Berwick Dental Arts, making smiles beautiful. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Just about set to go with tonight's home opener for the Bulldogs. Taking on the Comets of Crestwood on a beautiful evening for high school football. Berwick, as we mentioned earlier, won the toss, deferred to the second half. So we'll get a look at this. Uh, Crestwood offense and see what they do in the absence of uh, Caleb Benjamin. We're expected to see Brendan Dennis and Noah Schultz deep. Boy, Schultz isn't off the field very often for this team. He is the starting quarterback. He returns kicks. He returns punts. And he is the strong safety. Jimmy, most high school football players will tell you, play a fifth quarter if you want. They can handle it. So... A young guy, not uh, overly sized, no, not lineman size. Those big boys, they can fatigue a lot easier. And, uh, yeah, they, they like to play. They don't mind putting in the extra duties. I think they're not quite deep enough at the 15-yard line for Brendan Hinkle's left. We'll see. Brendan Hinkle back on the field for Berwick after sitting out with the COVID protocols last week. Yeah, he's done a terrific job in his career, place kicking and kicking off. It is Robert Knight along with Noah Schultz deep for Crestwood. So finally, after a long, long delay for no apparent reason, we are ready to go. As Hinkle kicks it off and this home opener is underway. Very short kick, but very, very high. Knight on the run at the 25-yard line to the 30 to the far side and tackled in the open field at about the 33. That's where Crestwood will put it in play. Then we go against the Berwick defense. We expect to see lining up with Taji Taylor and Alex Hacker at the ends. Andrew Blockus and Landon Rubenstein at the tackles. Linebacker Spencer Kishbaugh, Tristan English, and Betty Noor, the corners. Braden Boone and Rowan Slobinski, Bo Sheptock, and Dre Wilk will be the safeties. Ryan Bank is with the tackle. Prevented the man from turning the corner. Nice open field play. 34-yard line is the line of scrimmage for Crestwood. Under center is Brendan Dennis, and Dennis is going long down the far side. Great coverage, and a kickoff by Wilk back at the 24-yard line. So just as Andy mentioned that rumor earlier that they were going to start someone else at quarterback other than Noah Schultz, not only did they start someone else, but they had that someone else through a long pass to start. It was way off the mark. Wilk with the interception, and Berwick gets the early turnover. Rowan Slavinsky, who goes six foot three, had excellent coverage. He just kind of slowed down and mounted after a run through him to try to get to the ball. And the ball was overthrown. And Dre Wilk from safety coming over to join him. The coverage makes an easy interception. That's a big play to start the game for Berwick. You remember last week on the second play from scrimmage, Berwick was able to recover a fumble against Southern Columbia. They weren't able to convert. We'll see how the Bulldogs can do here as they take over at their own 24-yard line. They move from our left to our right. From the gun. Quarterback Matt Lozinski. Gives the ball off the right side to Wilk, and he gets about five to the 29-yard line. Crestwood defensively. Magnus Bibble at one end. 
The other end is usually Wyatt Urbanovich, but we saw him out with an injury. Looks like Josh Snyder is going to be in that, that other defensive end position. Aiden Jardine and John Jones at the tackles. Cole Kakalechik, Lyndon Lincoln, Bibla, and Ethan Chudak are the linebackers. We'll check the secondary after this play. Second and five, Berwick at their own 29. Bit of a unique formation. See Dre Wilk one side of the shotgun quarterback there. Here's Bankus with his first carry. Ryan Bankus running hard, very close to the first down yardage. That's secondary for Crestwood. Bryce Beanie and Brendan Dennis at the corners. Noah Schultz is the strong safety. The free safety is Ethan Stoll. Bankus just exploded like we saw him in the Southern Columbia game off the right side. Wonderful blocking. Get him through the line of scrimmage and into the second level. Comfortably move the chains. First and ten. Berwick at their own 34-yard line. Just underway here at Crespin Field. Was expecting to see Benny Knorr with an early carry or Aiden Mason with the early carry. Instead, Ryan Bankus who did the load last week and Dre Wilk with the first carry of the game. Berwick with a slot to the left side. Spencer Kishbaugh on a wing to that side comes in motion. Quick out to Wilk. Turns the corner and gets out to the 41-yard line. So Berwick showing a, a lot of things early. The quick out to Wilk, and they'll pick up good yardage in that first down play, 7 to the 41. Yeah, it was nice. They want to do the quick passing. You know, it's easy. Get it, step and throw. A little bit of a wobbly shotgun snap. He had to control it to get it, and then couldn't quite get the spin he wanted to deliver it. The short sideways tie pass to Dre Wilk, who uses the blocking already downfield, afforded for him and makes that seven-yard gain. Benny Noor's in the lineup now. He's in a slot to the left side. Lodzinski gives the ball to Bankus, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage for a loss. That's a terrific defensive play. Cole Kakalichik. He is their man in the middle, six foot, 220-pound junior. Makes a play. It's a loss of a couple back to the 39. It'll bring up a third down and five. Came on through untouched, Jim. And when you get that sort of six-yard, seven-yard run, you're going to put a lick on any running back and it'll result in a loss of two. Was it Mangus that he hit? Yes. Okay. Third down and five. Berwick from their 39. Onzinski back to throw, fires, the catch is made right at the sticks, Ooh. may come up a little bit short. Kakalajic makes the stop, diving catch by Benny Noor, and they are giving him the first down. I didn't think he had enough, but I suppose catching it and going to the ground, he was able to get it. The uh, chains were to the back of the official who came out, put his foot down as to what was gained. So a true measurement there. And uh, Benny Knorr comes up with the sliding catch. The back-to-back -back first down for this possession for the Bulldogs who have now reached their own 44-yard line. Wodzinski again operating out of the gun. Knorr comes in motion left to right. Handoff straight ahead to Bankus, slips out of a tackle, gets into Crestwood territory at the 48-yard line. Nice running by Ryan Bankus. Ethan Stoltz came up from the safety position and tripped him at about seven yards, but he was able to somehow regain his balance and turn it a little bit further. Actually, he might have hit him. He was deeper in the eye, hit him at about four. It'll be about a gain of eight overall. Second down and two. Berwick in Crestwood territory for the first time. Center Bruce Hartman over the football from there. Slot to the left. Wide receiver right. Wodzinski gets the shotgun snap straight back to throw. Looking, looking. Here comes the rush. He will throw it away. Let's see if the officials are going to call something here because there was no one anywhere near that pass. Don't know the rule, but if you're throwing where a receiver needs to be in the area, no one was. It's not a question of rolling himself out of the tackle box either. In any case, oh, there's your flag very, very late after the officials confirm. I thought it should have been a, an intentional grounding type of call. I think maybe they thought it was so obvious, Jim, they didn't need the yellow flag. Yep, intentional grounding, and that'll be a loss of down as well as the five yards. Yeah, it's a big play. I mean, obviously, with the rush, you need to throw it away, but it's got to be somewhere in the vicinity of a receiver. Well, incomplete loses to down. 
For the five yards, of course, hurts you a little bit. You'll need 11 now instead of the five that you would have had. The ball back at the Berwick 43-yard line. Third down and 11 for the Bulldogs. 7.55 to go in a scoreless first quarter. Dre Wilk wide left. Benny Norton slot to that side. Braden Boone wide right. Onsinski has the snap. Back to throw. Has good time. Now breaks down. Throws downfield for Benny Noor. He's covered well. I know a Schultz ball sails over him and out of bounds. So fourth down, punt team on for Berwick. Monsinski's getting time, but apparently the receivers are covered or covered where he feels he can't force the throw. I think he needs to get that ball out of there a little bit quicker than he's planning to on these balls a little bit deeper downfield. A little hesitant in the pocket, but again, might just be that the coverage is that strong. Noah Schultz deep, Betty Noor takes the snap, he will punt it away. Line drive kick, Schultz fields it on the run, breaks one tackle, and then Gavin Cunningham wraps him up at the 30-yard line. Good coverage downfield by him. Most certainly was. He was able to sidestep the first man on a relatively high punt, and it looks like he was going to generate some upfield momentum. But as you mentioned, Cunningham coming on down strong, making a good tackle there near where he caught it. Second possession for the Comets. First time they had it. One play. Pass intercepted by Dre Wilk. 7.39 to go in a scoreless first quarter. Crestwood moving from our right to our left. Brendan Dennis remains in there at the quarterback controls. Noah Schultz is the tailback. They toss to him, tries the left side, and picks up just a couple to the 33. Swarming defense by Berwick. Spencer Kishbot set the end, though. His outside linebacker, he had contained. He would not let it get wide. Slows the play down. Forces them to turn it up. It'll be two to three yards on the play. Second down and seven. Noah Schultz splits wide to the left side. Dennis under center. Schultz goes in motion to the right. Call goes off the right side to Shudak. He's got running room, and he has the first down, and then some over the 45, out to the 47-yard line. Power run by Ethan Shudak. It was slicing from left to right on the inside, from over left guard to over right guard. We mentioned this offensive line, how they can dominate. They really made the hole at the line of scrimmage, and the safeties eventually have to make the play and drag him down. 12 yards on the run by Shudak. Schultz again in motion left to right. The call goes to Lincoln Bibla, the fullback, straight ahead. He gets maybe a yard. Again, Berwick getting a lot of defenders on the ball carrier. Benny Knorr playing the outside linebacker. They missed him last week. Came up strong, sat in the hole, squared up on the man and really put a shoulder into him. Two yards for Lincoln Bibla. Second and eight, Crestwood at their own 48. Robert Knight is wide to the left side. Shudak is the tailback in the eye. Knight goes in motion to the right, toss sweep right side. Shudak runs into a wall of blue, and he'll be brought down perhaps for a loss of a yard. Andrew Block is from his defensive tackle, pursued wide and made the tackle over the defensive end. But things were being stopped out there. They weren't giving him the corner. It's forced to slow down. And Block is just sort of steamrolls over the man who has to slow down. Third down and nine, Crestwood at their own 47. Wide receiver to either side. Dennis under center. Knight comes in motion, rolling Left is Dennis, fires the pass, incomplete, intended for Robert Knight, beyond his reach, Bo Shiptock on the coverage in the Bulldogs' secondary, and it will be fourth and nine, punt team on for the Comets. Good defensive stand, Jim. You know, this team showed on the one play, the 12-yard burst that went up inside by Ethan Shudak, what they can do with their offensive line and the runners who have enough talent. But Berwick came up strong, stopping a few plays on the periphery, forcing the pass, covering it well, and now forcing this punt. Chris Smolnick back to do the punting. Long snapping. And the kick is away. Beautiful oh kick. Inside the 10-yard line is Braden Boone. 
gets by one man to the 20, to the 25, the 30, and out over the 35 to the 37 yard line. Crestwood thinks they have the football, and they do. Ethan Shudak. Jimmy had that ball out a little bit loose. I thought he was going to lose it earlier in the run, but it was an electrifying return. Man out kicked the coverage. Boone was able to pick it up. Now they're around the five yard line and start up field and find some seams. A little wiggle left, a little wiggle right, but the ball not secured well enough. The final hit pops it loose. Shudak right in the area falls on it and it'll be the advantage of the Comets. So both teams with one turnover in this opening quarter. That is 5 12 remaining. Still no score. Dennis remains the quarterback. Noah Schultz, normally the quarterback, is the tailback in the eye, and he gets the call and tries to sweep the right side and turns the corner to the 35 and dances down the far sideline close to a first down. Yeah, not as tough on the corner that time. Spencer Kishbaugh is an outside linebacker. I don't think he had contained, but he was a little late getting wide to make the tackle. Dove at the line of scrimmage, could not trip him up. Then it's up to the safeties and corners to try to finish that, but not till after shootout gains nine. Second down and one. That was Schultz that Schultz. gained that nine. He is the tailback in the eye. Shudak ahead of him as the fullback. Second and one. Schultz gets the call up the gut, looking for the first down yardage. Appears to have it near the 25-yard line. Yeah, you have that big offensive line. They'll take tighter splits, go heel to heel, and then just explode, knowing the cadence of the snap count. They'll push everything back. Noah Schultz, quarterback, ex-quarterback. Here he's turned into running back. Runs it like a quarterback sneak, knowing the down, you know, down and distance and what he needs to get. First and ten. Crestwood with a threat at the Berwick 26-yard line. Under five minutes to go in a scoreless first quarter. Wide receiver to either side. Dennis under center. Shudak is the tailback. Fumble on the snap. The quarterback, Dennis, able to pick it up and get ahead for a yard or two. Yeah, it came back directly off his top hand, dropped down, but bounced near the foot of the center. He picked it up and went over the right side. Ended up with a good yard on the game. Second down and eight. Crestwood at the Berwick 24-yard line. Got to make them pay for those mistakes, Jim. Drop snap in there. You have to be hitting and fight to get that ball a little quicker. Kakalechik now is the fullback in the I formation. Schultz goes in motion to the left. The call goes to Shudak off the left side. He's hit hard. Andrew Blockus among the people in there for the Bulldogs. Saw Blockus in there. Also number 34 who had an outstanding game for that last week. And Tristan English playing the middle linebacker in this game. Just a yard or so. Third down and seven. Coming for Crestwood is Dennis. Trotted to the sideline. Got the play call from head coach Ryan Archangeli. Schultz is wide to the right. Feeney is wide left. Third down call. Berwick jumps across. Cadence call, Jim. We have number 10 in Dennis Brendan in there at quarterback probably for the first time. He's able to get that uh, snap count, mark the signal, get Berwick to jump off sides. So mark it at the 18-yard line. So now it's third down and two. And that gives this uh, third down call a whole different look. Yeah, especially with this offensive line. Magnus Bibla is the tight end to the right. High formation. Shudak at the tail of the tandem. Third and two. Dennis gives the Shudak off the right side. Gets the corner. Has the first down and then some. As he's fell out of bounds across the way. Looks like he's inside the 10-yard line. Betty Norton, the outside linebacker that time. Couldn't get the contain on the corner. Reached out with the one arm, but the runner just too tough. With his head of steam, able to break through that arm tackle and extend the run. Eight yards on the carry by Ethan Shudak. First and goal. Crestwood at the 10-yard line. Kakalechek is the fullback ahead of Shudak in the eye. Brendan Dennis 
gives the ball to Shudak off the left side. Good first down carry gets to the five-yard line. Taji Taylor makes the stop from his defensive end position for the Bulldogs. Yeah, but has to bend it inside and bend back. If I'm Crestwood, I'd be running between the tackles, although they've had the success outside as well in the past few plays of this series. Oh, they're making their running game go and keeping Berwick guessing. Second down and goal. Crestwood at the Berwick five. Again, the eye formation. Wide receiver to either side. Brendan Dennis under center. Try to give it to Shudak. Doesn't get there. Hit behind the line. He'll lose yardage back to the 11-yard line. Looked like he wanted the handoff to Shudak. And Shudak just kind of ran by the handoff. The quarterback had to keep it. They'll lose six yards back to the 11 and bring up third and goal. Play was made by Alex Hacker. He's been switched from linebacker to defensive end. That time he held his own. Saw that the quarterback had the ball. Tripped him up. And then eventually other people came to finish off the quarterback as he's stumbling forward. Third and goal, Crestwood at the Berwick 11. Schultz in motion right to left. Play action, Dennis back to throw, dumps over the middle, has Shudak inside the five and down to about the three-yard line. Inside, screen to Shudak. Gets some yardage. Now it's going to be a fourth down and goal at the three. You don't normally see inside screens in that situation, but it proved relatively effective. Berwick, though, keeping people flying for the football, keeps him out of the end zone. Big play in this opening quarter that has 40 seconds remaining, no score. Fourth and goal, Crestwood at the Berwick three-yard line. Offset eye behind quarterback Brendan Dennis. Shudak is the tailback. Schultz in motion left to right. Toss sweep right side, Shudak inside the two toward the end zone, comes up short, comes up short, throw it gets the stand. Benny Noor, outside linebacker, as the play comes toward him, attacks it, forces the play inside to his players who were coming toward the ball. And while the running back is able to get some positive yards, they stop him at the goal line with people pushing him back. Big stand for Berwick. So the Bulldogs survive their turnover. They'll take over at the one-yard line of Crestwood. Name some good plays from here, Jim. <laughs> don't normally see Lonzinski with quarterback sneaks, but I don't know if you put him in shotgun. Berwick's still huddling as if there were a timeout. That's not the case. We don't have the 40-second clocks uh, on the field, so the officials will be keeping an eye on this. Watch for the back judge should he raise his hand, but it doesn't look like anyone's in that position and wants to raise their hand. No. James DeAndra has come on for this offense, a bigger back in this situation. Onsinski from the Berwick one-yard line gives the ball off the right side. There's some running room out to about the seven-yard line by DeAndra, and that will be the final play of this opening quarter. With the score, Berwick nothing, Crestwood nothing. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio, HLM. The Medicine Shop. The Berwick Medicine Shop at their new location. 500 Fowler Avenue, Berwick has your favorite pharmacist team, like Kim, who you've trusted for more than 20 years, and they've gotten even better. Free blister packs, free home delivery with no tips, and less than a 15-minute average wait time on prescriptions. Why would you go to the big box pharmacies where you might wait for days? Go to the name you know and trust, The Medicine Shop of Berwick, and follow their Facebook page. Berwick Medicine Shop proudly supports the Berwick Bulldogs. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. No score after one quarter play. Big defensive stand by Berwick. Presswood fourth and goal to three. Shudak who runs very hard. Good size back. Denny Nor makes the play. Berwick takes over, throwing one. Get a nice run from James Dambra at the last play of the opening quarter. Picked up six. 
And it will be a second down and four for Berwick from their own seven-yard line. When we start the second quarter, Bulldogs will be moving from our right to our left. James DeAndre, Jim, I've been trying to get the pronunciation down. We struggle with it. It's just an R-A at the end, but yet when I talked with Carm Francesco, he said D'Andrea. But, you know, we've never, had coaches tell us wrong. Never, <laughs> never trust coaches never trust with pronunciation. <laughs> if they have a tough one, they'll just give the kid a nickname. <laughs> so here we go. Good first quarter. Presswood had the best opportunity. Berwick's defense up to the task. And now the Bulldogs, second and four. They have it at their own seven-yard line. The run by DeAndre was a huge run, Jim. He was able to bounce it out a hole wider. So he used it not just his size, but also his mind there to see it. Second down Ooh. call this time. Nothing doing. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. Tried to go to DeAndre again, Jim, but this time there was penetration. That grabbed him by the helmet. That had me react. Might we see a face mask from in there? But instead, we'll just see the loss. And he, he minimized the loss, just about a yard or so. I thought he'd lose more than that. Third down and six now for Berwick. Big call coming. Obviously, you don't want to punt out of this position. They have it at their own five-yard line. Bo Sheptock will check into the offense. Very slowly, Jim. I'm worried about uh, the, the timing. Again, we're not seeing a 40-second clock running. Back judge isn't ready to raise his hand. I'm not sure who's keeping it. There's the hands up now. They're going to get hit with a delay. Nope, that wasn't for that. Three receivers to the right. Lonsinski has the shotgun snap back to throw. Steps up into it, and he will be wrapped up at about the nine-yard line. He'll pick up four. They needed six. Punting situation for Berwick. Again, he looks tentative, like he's unwilling to force if anyone's near the receiver. You'd like things to be so open that it's a comfortable throw, but uh, sometimes you got to use that timing in your head and get rid of that ball. I don't have eyes throughout the entire field, so I can't see how strong the coverage is, but he's just not able to get that throw off with the timing he should. Fourth and three, Benny Noor deep in the Berwick end zone to do the punting. Bruce Hartman with a good snap, and the kick is away. Very, very high. Schultz will feel the bounce at the 44, trying to get outside left to the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20. Still on his feet, breaks another tackle and gets inside the 10-yard line. Terrific return by Noah Schultz and Crestwood in business. Yeah, Berwick needs to cover that better. Benny Noor eventually saving the touchdown, grabbing him and whatever he can. But Berwick had a man right there. It was Bruce Hartman, the, the, the snapper. And uh, he, he watched the bounce, and he watched the man take it, and then, and then the man just sidestepped him very easily. That was, you know, way up here around the 40-yard line. And then other arm tackles, missing him and not bringing him down, and Crestwood set up well here in the red zone. 36 yards on the punt return by Noah Schultz. First and goal, Crestwood at the Berwick 8-yard line. Slot to the left, slot to the right. Schultz now at quarterback. And he waits the shotgun snap. And he has it, fakes handoff, keeps the football himself, and he's wrapped up after a short gain down around the six-yard line. Andrew Blockus making the play. Is there a fumble, Jim? Blockus caught him with the defensive tackle, spun him over toward the defensive end. And apparently they are ruling that as he fell to the ground, he lost control, and Berwick will take over the football. So the second turnover by Crestwood in the game. This was a big one as Berwick will take over inside their 10-yard line. Terrific play by Andrew Blockett. It was. He's a right defensive tackle. He shoved his man. The blocker got free. Caught the running back. Spun him to the ground and is throwing him toward the defensive end. The ball comes loose. And Berwick does come up. That is a huge, huge turnover to make up for the poor coverage on the punt return. First down, Berwick at their own seven. 9.52 to go in a scoreless first half. Wonsinski out of the gun. Two wide receivers to either side. One comes in motion 
Onzinski will keep the ball himself and nothing doing. Maybe a yard on the play. Faking the jet sweep to Dre Wilk, who is the man coming in motion, should be effective. He should draw a lot of attention. Lanzinski pulls it out and then takes it straight ahead. But uh, really no blocking on the inside to help him. He's lucky to gain that half a yard. Second down and nine. Berwick at their own eight-yard line. Lanzinski tries to the sideline to get, get the play call. And a long way back to the huddle. Berwick needs a play to get out of this deep hole. Slot to the left side. Lomczynski has the snap. Fires the quick out way beyond the intended receiver. Benny North, the 11, going to bring up a third down and nine at the eight. The timing in the passing game just is not there. Lomczynski didn't seem rushed, got it in shotgun, seemed comfortable in throwing the out pattern but led his receiver by five yards. So Berwick with a big third down and nine back at their own eight-yard line. Said Braden Boone wide to the left. Benny Noor is in a slot to the left. And Dre Wilk is wide to the right. Onsinski back to throw at his goal line. Fires to the far side incomplete. Tried to go to uh, his, his tall receiver, Spencer Kishbaugh, over in the flat at about four yards. Thrown beyond him, even if Kishbaugh caught it, there were tacklers in the area to bring him down short. So you see Brendan Hinkle hunting from his end zone again, and Berwick needs to tighten up the punt coverage. Yeah, it's actually Benny Noor that does the punting for oh. the Bulldogs. And the last time he punted, Noah Schultz, who was deep, returned at 36 yards. Snap is a high one over the head of Benny Norris. So the first point of this game will come on a bad snap from Punt for Nation. It is 2 0 Crestwood. Time out of the field, 8.54 remaining in this first half. Crestwood 2, Berwick nothing. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio, HLM. It won't be long before tax time rolls around, so remember to visit Michael Daddio CPA at ND Accounting and Consulting for your income tax needs. ND Accounting and Consulting handles both business and individual taxes, as well as offering a variety of accounting services, including payroll, auditing, and bookkeeping. For tax and accounting services, look for Michael Daddio CPA at ND Accounting and Consulting with two locations, 214 Pine Street in Berwick and 5929 Main Road in Sweet Valley. This this is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. In this opening half, Crestwood has had the ball inside the Berwick 10 on two different occasions. Berwick's defense up to the task, but when Berwick was forced to punt just moments ago, the snap sailed high over the head of Benny Norrie. Had no chance at it. So it is a safety. It's a 2 nothing Crestwood lead. And Berwick will be kicking from their 20-yard line. They have the option of punting it or free kicking it. It'll be Brendan. Uh, Brendan Hinkle putting it down on the tee to kick. Return men on their own 35-yard line. It is Robert Knight and Noah Schultz. 8.54 to go, first half. Crestwood with a 2 nothing lead. As Hinkle gets the kick away. Beautiful yeah. kick, beautiful kick. Knight back at his 26-yard line to the 30, to the 35, and is hit and dropped at the 42-yard line. There's the play you want to see on specialty teams. Nick Pajovic, Jim, coming up hard. Squares up on the man as he holds his leg. I think it's Evan Meehan, 27. Oh, you're right. Jump the number. From the 42-yard line, that's where Crestwood will put it in play. Under nine minutes to go in this opening half. And the Comets lead it by a score of two to nothing. Boy, a nice kick by Hinkle, though. Nice and deep. Sent the men back pedaling. Throws the timing off. Berwick came down in their lanes, held their lanes. And yes, it was Kevin Meehan, 27, put the lick on that ball carrier. First and ten, Comets. Brendan Dennis gives the ball to Schultz on the left side. Lots of runner room into Bowie territory inside the 40. 
down to the 37-yard line. Noah Schultz, there is a flag down back in Crestwood territory. He hit the lane, and it's about six yards into the run where we see the flag. It was kind of like, hey, where is everybody? Where is the defense? That's beyond, you know, where the, the, the offensive line gets all the credit. Apparently a hold from that point that would have extended the run. Bo Sheptock eventually saved the touchdown, but you don't want to keep relying on these safeties to be making all the tackles. But if you're being held and pulled away from the play, there's not much you can do. The ball back to the 37-yard line of Crestwood, where it will be first down and 15. Again, Brendan Dennis under center with a wide receiver to either side. Give us this shoot act, looking for running room, and nothing there. Maybe a yard or two on the play. We count about five, six, seven blue jerseys in there. I want to see who got in there first, but I just kind of missed it with them. Andrew Hacker coming up, seeing uh, big number four, uh, Spencer Tischbach coming off the pile, but there are four or five other jerseys. Just a couple of yards on the carry, so it's second down and 13, Crestwood, at their own 39. Haven't had to pass much. Quarterbacks combined, one interception, one complete in three attempts. Dennis under center. Eye formation behind him. Play action, rolls right, looking to throw. Man in pursuit, turns the corner, keeps the football, gets to midfield, and gets to the Berwick 47-yard line. Nice scramble by Brendan Dennis. Yeah, scramble indicates he's being flushed, Jim. It was a rollout. And I don't know how much he was really looking downfield to throw. He had nice speed on that rollout. It looked like he wanted to tuck and go with it the entire time. Showed good speed for a quarterback, and eventually Rowan Slabinski has to give up on his receiver to make the play. That's a 15-yard run by Brendan Dennis. And a first down at the Berwick 46-yard line. Schultz is the tailback in the eye. He gets the call, tries the left side, and nothing doing. Spencer Kishbaugh really came up hard. He had an impact game last week, and they need impact games from him. That type of good physical hit is the type that turns momentum. They give Schultz back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Second down and 10. Crestwood at the Berwick 46. Yeah, Schultz had that good five-yard sprint, but so did... Uh, you know, the, the, the tackler in Spencer Kishbaugh, about two, three steps into him, and he wins the battle. Second down, call coming. Brendan Dennis, straight drop back to throw, fires the quick out, it's picked off. Picked off on the far side. It's Spencer Kishbaugh at the 25, the 20. He's going in for a throwing touchdown. Spencer Kishbaugh with the pick and the long return, and Berwick has their first lead of the game, first lead of the season. This team did better when it was in passing. Second interception in four attempts for the quarterbacks. It was just a little flat pass. They wanted to throw it in the flat, but Spencer Kishbaugh's there. It's not a strong pass that kind of floats out. Spencer Kishbaugh dips with one hand into his other and then starts off down the sideline. Gets a nice block, I believe it was by Taji Taylor. Takes the last man out, and then it's the foot raised, and Kishbaugh wins. Brendan Hinkle will attempt his first extra point of the season. Snap, placement, kick is up, and the kick is good. Tied on the field, 6.52 to go first half. Berwick 7, Crestwood 2. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio, HLM. Hi, this is Cassidy from the Independent Sports Service Department, Route 11 in Bloomsburg. Does your Ford or Lincoln vehicle need service? Having trouble getting an appointment at your usual service center? At Independence Ford, we can and will take care of all your service needs. Regardless of where you purchase your Ford or Lincoln vehicle, our goal is to get you back on the road. Give me a call for an appointment today at 784-1414. Come and get a great deal and total satisfaction. Independence Ford, better people, better prices. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog Football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. 
with their offense struggling. Berwick needs the big play from their defense, and they get it. Spencer Kishball with the interception. Return of 55 yards for the score. Berwick with a 7-2 lead. And Andy, Spencer Kishball can run. Yes, he can, Jim. I think it's that, his athleticism that moved him from the defensive front. He was a defensive end last year and an impact player there. They can move him back a level, keep him on the outside, still use his contain, but also use him more in pass coverage. At six foot three, six foot four, and that type of speed, he could make plays like that, and he really did. Beautiful return. Berwick needed that spark. Yep. Needed that big play by Kishbaugh. And now the 7-2 lead for the Bulldogs with 6.52 remaining in this opening half. As Brendan Hinkle has it. Teed up. Senior approaches. And this kick is a beauty. Nice. Knight over the shoulder. Catch back at the three-yard line. To the 10. To the far side. To the 15. Turns the corner. The 20. The 25. And ridden out of bounds. At about the 26. Maybe the 27-yard line. Taji Taylor having contain on the far side. Certainly does maintain it. But you'd like to see the people in their lane put a little bit more pressure and prevent that return from getting that far. A lot of east-west running, but gaining yardage as he went before Taji Taylor is able to finish him off and take him out of bounds. So Crestwood will take over at their 26. Again, they've gone with a wide receiver at quarterback in this game. The results have not been good. Brendan Dennis has been intercepted twice. The latter for a touchdown. He remains in there. Under center from the 26-yard line. Offset eye behind him. The call goes straight ahead to the fullback, and Berwick's all over the play. Andrew Blockus, Jim. They went with a 52 look rather than the standard four-man front. Blockus at defensive right tackle or nose guard. I didn't see where. But in the interior, he's able to squirt through a seam, front the man, and bring him down hard. Possibly one. Shudak loses a yard. Second down and 11 for the Comets. Trailing for the first time in this game. Slot to the left side. Dennis. Under center. Long count. Gives his Schultz the tailback. Trying to get outside right. And he will not get very far. Rowan Slavinsky coming from the secondary to make the play for the Bulldogs. Alex Hacker, defensive end here on this left side, held his own, stretched that out. And Slavinsky coming up, able to make the tackle and stop it. In this last series, Benny Knorr has been playing nose guard, Jim, using his quickness to try to shoot the gaps and get penetration. We've seen penetration by Blockus, so a little bit of a different scheme. Now Berwick's back to its four-man front here in the passing situation. Timeout by Crestwood. 5.23 to go, first half. Throwing seven, Crestwood two. You're listening to Bulldogs Football and Sports Radio, HLM. The Mayo Funeral Homes, located at 110 Chestnut Street in Berwick and 77 Main Street in Shikshini, are proud sponsors of Berwick Bulldog Football. The Mayo Funeral Homes, serving all faves, makes it easier for those you love with prearranged funeral counseling, insurance, and pre-financed funerals. Mayo Funeral Homes also offers expert guidance in both traditional and cremation services. Mayo Funeral Homes, perfection in every detail. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Five minutes, 23 seconds remaining in the opening half of the home opener for the Bulldogs. They lead Crestwood by a score of 7-2. to two. And following this Crestwood timeout, the Comets have it at their own 29-yard line. Facing a third down and seven. Passing situation for a team that struggled with the pass. Four passes overall. Two have been intercepted. Wide side of the field is to the left as they're on the right. Hash mark. That's the Crestwood side. Will they go in that direction? And who will Dennis throw it? Is the wide receiver who is playing quarterback in this game. Noah Schultz, the normal quarterback, is that tailback. Here's a third and seven. Knight in motion right to left. Dennis, 
has the snap, rolls to his left. Looking downfield, lobs the pass, almost picked off. Rowan Slavinsky got a hand on it, couldn't quite bring it down at the 42-yard line right in front of the Crestwood bench, but a good stand by Berwick. Fourth down, punt team on for Crestwood. Yeah, he had to fight to try to make the catch and keep himself in bounds. He just wasn't going to be able to do that. Certainly in position. There was a man in front of the receiver, Slavinsky behind him, and able to reach in front, the ball overthrown. No chance of that being completed. Ethan Shudak back to punt for Crestwood, standing back at his 15-yard line. Chris Smolnick does the long snapping. Good snap. Shudak gets the kick away. Takes a high hop. Berwick's deep end will let it go. It's down by Crestwood about the Berwick 32-yard line. And that's where the Bulldogs will put it in play with 5.07 remaining in this opening half and Berwick leading it by a score of 7-2. to two. Football people will tell you you need to catch that even if you fair catch it, but you can play it safe and it took an opportunistic bounce for Berwick. However, it could have as easily bounced on a ball that should have been caught taken 15 yards away. Berwick's Andy, offense needs to get a go in those they, games. They do indeed, but I was just about to say, if Berwick's defense continues to play the run as well as they have in this opening half, it's going to be very tough on Crestwood because they have shown no ability to throw the football. No. Too, too, uh, yeah, they're, they're just not there. Too inexperienced at that position. Just one eight-yard catch by Shudak. The other four incomplete. Two of those four intercepted. Ryan Bankus is the running back to the right of quarterback Matt Lundzinski as Crestwood appeared to jump offside. Berwick will get five. Easy way. Yeah, Josh Snyder, right defensive end, did come. And it's good to see Berwick use that cadence call as well. Go with the hard count. This team's jumpy to make some plays. They can see the momentum turning. They get the defensive lineman to take that false step. 5.07 to go. Opening half. Bulldogs with their full complement of timeouts. They have the 7-2 lead. And they have a first and five at their own 38-yard line. Slot to the left. Wazinski out of the gun. Fakes to Bankus, fires to the far side to Dre Wilk. Wilk tries to spin away from a tackler, does so, and gets close to a first down. Boy, nice move in the open field by Dre Wilk. Yeah, it's a sideways throw, and there's no one to block for him. It's the only receiver, and there's three defenders. He spins, loses the first, and splits the next two with the dive to maximize four yards on that gain. Second down and one. Berwick at their own 42-yard line. And what do you call here? Do you try to use a free play to go downfield, or do you just try to push it ahead and force the yardage? There are two receivers to the right side. Wonsinski gives the ball to Bankins off the left side. He's got some running room and hit hard, but not before he gets the first down at the 46-yard line. As Making this stop for Crestwood was their free safety, Ethan Stoltz. Yeah, he put a shock on uh, Bankus, but Bankus knew he had the first down. He wins the battle. It doesn't matter how hard you hit, so long as the guy could jump back up and get back in his huddle. Well, nice run by Bankus. Bulldogs, first and ten at their own 46. Moving from our right to our left in this second quarter. Braden Boone, wide right. Wilk in a slot to that side. Now after a shift, Spencer Kishbaugh is on a wing to the right, and Lonsinski rolls to the right. Fires incomplete. Good coverage downfield and good timing. The pass intended for Braden Boone. Brendan Dennis was the man with the timing, Jim. I thought he should have focused more on the ball than the tackle. He might have had a chance of getting in front, taking it away. It's a nice footwork by Lonzinski. He got it, semi-roll, and then a real tight spiral on a bullet pass out there. But, uh, the coverage rather tight, able to knock that one away. Landon Rubenstein has come on as Gavin Cunningham came off. Looked like he had some of Equipment problem, perhaps. Second down and 10. Berwick at their own 46-yard line. Dre Wilk in a slot to the right side. Braden Boone outside of him. 
Onsinski gives the ball to Bankus and gets very little. A yard, maybe two on the play as he tries the left side. Mason Gert, 5'9", 200-pound sophomore, makes the play for Crestwood. Three people penetrated into the backfield. Josh Snyder among them. You get a little more impact out of the offensive line. You can't have that many people coming on through. Third down and 10. Bulldogs at their own 46. Slot to the right side. After a shift, Tristan English is the tight end on the right. Onsinski fumbles the shotgun staff, picks it up, keeps his eyes downfield, gets the pass away at the last moment, incomplete. He was in the grasp of Kakalichik. So fourth down, punt team on for Berwick. That snap doesn't help, but he recovered very nicely, picked it up, continued the roll, and looked comfortable enough. But nowhere to go with the football. Whether he's seeing everyone is covered all the time, he's forced to ground that, and I don't blame him there. Funny situation for Berwick. They had a problem with a long snap that is the reason why Crestwood has two points on the board. Officials step in. Stop play. Don't understand why. Conference among the officials. Nothing with the players. No one being checked for equipment. No blood. I don't understand the stoppage, but something's not quite right. Maybe the yard marker they want to make sure they get right. But, uh, they're changing the yard marker. Apparently they spotted it wrong, Jim. Yeah. It wasn't a grounding. They just had it as sort of a fourth and 18. Should be a fourth and 10. They, they now move the chains back. Benny Noor awaits the snap. He's back at his 30-yard line. Another high snap. He goes back and gets it. He's going to have to run with the football, and he's going to be dropped at the 45-yard line. So, again, a problem with the snap, and Crestwood with a great opportunity in Berwick territory with 2.56 remaining in the half, and the Bulldogs leading at 7-2. One man was bearing down on him when he picked it up. I was thinking he might be able to juke him and still get it off. But his momentum took him to the left, and as a right-footed punter, he can't run in that direction and still make the punt. He's running the wrong way. As a running back, he gave it every effort, but barely got back to the line of scrimmage. Slot to the left, slot to the right. Crestwood at the Berwick 45. Comments with two timeouts remaining. And now Berwick will use one of their timeouts. 7-2 Bulldogs, you're listening to Berwick Football and Sports Radio, HLM. Whether it's the heat of the preseason or the heart of the postseason, teams will always get a little boost from playing at home. Speaking of a boost at home, State Farm can boost your savings when you combine your homeowner's insurance with your auto coverage. So score one for the home team. Talk to State Farm agents Lori Powell or Sean Black in Berwick or Melissa Price in Nescapac about big savings for combining home and car coverage. Give State Farm agents Melissa Price, Sean Black, or Lori Powell a call today. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. The moment that nobody half. Crestwood gets a break on a bad snap. They take over at the Berwick 45-yard line. Berwick leads it 7-2. Two minutes, 56 seconds to go before the halftime break. Crestwood has to make decisions, Jim. There's not that much time on the clock, but enough time when you're on this side of the 50-yard line to still establish that running game. They have not had success at all with the pass. They have two timeouts, as you've mentioned. You might take some towards the perimeter and try to use the sideline on the runs, but hustle to the line of scrimmage if you're Crestwood. Slot to the left, slot to the right. Dennis out of the gun, has the snap. Fires to the far side, has the stand night, and he's wrapped up for loss back at midfield. Yes, he is. Braden Boone read that very well. It's a shotgun snap. The quarterback's already looking. He sees his man is taking a step or two back. He commits from his quarterback position on the far side of the field at a sprint. The ball's not really zipped over there, but it's floated sideways in the backfield. By the time the man catches it, Braden Boone is there to spin him to the ground for a loss of five. Second down, Crestwood at the Berwick 49-yard line. Clock running 220 to go in the half. 
Schultz in motion right to left. Fake handoff. Dennis keeps the football straight ahead. He gets to about the Berwick 45-yard line. It'll bring up a third down and 10. We'll go under two minutes remaining in the half. Remember, Crestwood with two timeouts remaining. Yeah, back to the original line of scrimmage, Jim, and it pretty much puts them in a passing down. I don't know if I think that way if I'm coaching this team with this talent. I might think two running plays. Try to get five or six and then go for it again. There's not that much time on the clock. Berwick's offense hasn't been that strong. Slot to the left, slot to the right. Knight in motion, left to right. So there's three receivers to the right. Pump fake. Dennis is going to run with the football. Betty Nora wraps him up at about the 43-yard line. Brendan Dennis had some success on a run by design before going off the right side. Here, even though it's sort of a pump fake on the sideways pass and looked downfield, he saw nobody open. Quickly used his feet. Got about three, four yards, and I expect a play from scrimmage here on fourth down after the stoppage. I'm a little surprised they're not using a timeout. They're using a lot of clock. We're going to go under a minute now, remaining in the half. Will they use it as the clock winds down? I, I don't understand if, if the you're, thinking. If you're going for it, I would assume they'd be in a hurry-up mode now, so I think they're going to punt. I would agree. I would agree, although this field position with Berwick's offense kind of sputtering, I don't know why you would punt it. Clock well, still running, 37, 36, 35. They'll use all they can, and then they'll use the timeout. We'll keep it right here. There will be a fourth and seven for the Comets. Coaches know their personnel better than I do, Jim, so they know what decisions they want to go with. Uh, my thinking would be, why not go for it on fourth down? You're across the 50 by six, seven yards. If you get it, wonderful. If you don't get it, give it to Berwick with you know a minute, minute 30 to play and play solid defense. Their defense has been relatively strong. The points they've given up have been on an interception return. But... Uh, you know, Coach Archangeli decides to play it differently, milks that clock on down, then uses his timeout to most likely set up the punt. And again, reminder, Berwick deferred after winning the toss to start this one, so they will get the football to start the second half. And if they can hold out for this last 34 seconds, they'll go in with the lead, which, uh, considering where they were at halftime last week they have to feel very very good about that and they have to feel very good about the way they're playing the run i think so too and i think some of it is the x's and o's jim we're seeing different looks we're seeing four-man front which is berwick standard but we've seen some five-man front with uh you know real quickness inside uh, working with uh, benny nor at nose guard and shooting different gaps it will be a play from scrimmage berwick with the safeties a little deeper Maybe a pooch punt. Man in motion to the right. Now they're going to throw it. Dennis looking long downfield. One-on-one -on -one situation. Incomplete. Incomplete. Boy, great coverage downfield. Braden Boone stayed with him step for step. I mean, if they're going to throw, they're going to try to beat you deep. You can sometimes tell by the way the receiver takes off. He's going to try that fly pattern. Braden Boone stayed with him step for step right there in his face and does not allow for the completion. I don't understand using don't. up all that time and then going for it. Well, 28.7 seconds, and I mentioned I would have gone for it with a minute 40 and I probably would have run the ball as well and if you don't make it turn it over to Berwick there's still not that much time Berwick's offense hasn't scored the points but you know coaches know their personnel know their situations know the way that they want to go he chose to run the time down and then throw the ball James Jandra is the tailback in the I formation it's Berwick at their own 42-yard line with 28 seconds remaining in the half. Onzinski under center now. DeAndre gets the call, and he's tackled behind the line of scrimmage at the 33-yard line. Magnus Bibla, one of the Bibla brothers, coming on in from his area. Not really blocked all that much. They're probably going to let the half run down, Jim, after that five-yard loss. 
the Bulldogs get the big, big play from Spencer Kishball on defense. And that's the difference in the first half. Berwick 7, Crestwood 2. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio, HLM. Forge Pub and Eatery on 11th and Mulberry in Berwick is where you need to go when you want a delicious homemade meal. Even the salad dressings are scratch made. Open every day at 11 with free delivery to the Berwick area. And check out their Facebook page to get the daily specials. They have a full bar, 10 beers on tap with 5 rotating seasonal brews, and an extensive selection of domestic and craft beers. It's the perfect place to go out with college. Or for date night, Forge will always impress. Forge Pub and Eatery in Berwick is a proud supporter of the Berwick Bulldogs football team. Welsh's Towing and Repair proudly supports the Berwick Bulldogs and wishes them a successful year. Welsh's Towing and Repair has a long tradition of helping. You can call Welsh's 24-7 at 759-9737. If you are in need of a tow, jump start, tire change, are locked out, or to request them on scene if you're in an accident, Welsh's accepts all major insurance and motor clubs, and they offer all types of preventive maintenance and state inspections for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Welsh's Towing and Repair, South Mercer Street in Berwick, and at their South Center Storage Facility, Columbia Boulevard. In Berwick. Lehigh Valley Health Network has some great news for residents of Greater Hazleton and surrounding communities. LVPG, Hazleton Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, is now located in the Humboldt Industrial Park at Station Circle in Hazel Township. Their orthopedics and sports medicine experts provide complete orthopedic care and accept most insurances, including Geisinger Gold. LVPG, Hazleton Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, your partners in orthopedic care. To learn more, visit lvhn.org forward slash orthopedics or call 570 861 8710. Northeast Pennsylvania is your home. And no matter what stage of life you find yourself in, what you rely on most is security. When that house becomes a home, the moment you get that new car, when your dreams become a reality, it's times like this when you have to look to the experts for advice and financial peace of mind. They're there with innovative products and services to help you with your financial future every step of the way. Together, they will help dreams and goals become reality. They are more than a bank. They're your neighbor. They are first. First Keystone Community Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Halftime for Preston Field, the Bulldogs home opener. A year ago, they lost to Crestwood here 35 0. But at the half, they have the lead over the Comets. Seven to two. Berwick gave the ball up to Crestwood on a fumble recovery after a punt return by Braden Boone, the Berwick 36 yard line. Crestwood eventually reached the Berwick three yard line where they had a fourth down with Ethan Shudak was stopped cold by Benny Noor. Bulldogs took over the football. There was no scoring in that opening quarter. Early in the second quarter, Crestwood was another great opportunity. Noah Schultz, a 36-yard punt return to the Berwick six-yard line. But on their first play from scrimmage, Andrew Blockus with a big play. Strips the ball, recovers the ball. Berwick takes over the football. But the Bulldogs were not able to move it. And on fourth and nine from their own eight, Benny Noor back in punt formation, high snap over his head through the end zone, gave Crestwood the 2 0 lead with 8.54 to go in the second quarter. Berwick struggling on offense, needed a big play from their defense, they got it. As Brendan Dennis's pass was picked off by Spencer Kisproff. He raced 55 yards for the touchdown, Berwick's first score of this season. Brendan Hinkle added the extra point. Berwick took the lead at 7-2. Crestwood had the ball in Berwick territory one more time after another problem with a snap on a punt. But the Bulldogs defense up to the task. That's how we stand here at halftime. Berwick 7, Crestwood 2. Stay with us. We'll have scores of other games from Raven Clyde a little bit later and the stats with Andy Lichty coming up next. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio, HLM. 
It's the Labor Day sales event all month long. So that means you can get a fantastic deal at Fairfield Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. And between their two locations, they have whatever car, truck, or SUV you're looking for. Find it at Fairfield. Stop in and take a look at the newly redesigned Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Ready for on- and off-road trails with plenty of room for people and packages. Drive home a brand new 2021 Jeep Renegade, just $25,700. Or how about a 2021 Ram 2500, just $47,500. Check out their ad in the Web Weekly this week for more incredible deals. Stop in and see the Kaiser Boys on Route 405 in Muncie or Dan Goldman on Route 11 in Danville. Fairfield for fantastic deals. Offers on select vehicles for qualified buyers only. Not all will qualify. Must finance through Chrysler Capital. All offers end September 30th. See dealer for complete details. Mason's Monogramming has the largest selection of bulldog items in Berwick. Family owned with more than 30 years experience and new bulldog wear for every age, including masks, tees, polos, sweater shirts, jackets, and hats. They even have brand new indestructible silicon cups, koozies, car coasters, decals, and more. Shop at masonsmonogram.com for their new items and select in-person pickup or shipping right to you. Follow their Instagram at Mason's Monogram for their latest new items. Mason's Monogram service in Berwick. Let them personalize for you. Don's Towing on Route 11 in Bloomsburg can handle any tow, whether it's a car or big rig, 24-7. Don's has roadside assistance, and your satisfaction is their priority. They always have a truck available, and you'll never wait more than 20 minutes to be picked up and on your way again. Don't let a flat tire ruin your day. Don's Towing will help you get where you need to go without breaking the bank. They accept all insurances, and those that pay out of pocket will appreciate their low prices. Don's Towing, Route 11, Bloomsburg, or check out their Facebook page. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg, WBWX Berwick. HLM. Crestwood High School marching band entertaining here at halftime with Berwick leading Crestwood in the Bulldogs home opener. 7-2 is the Berwick lead. Stats from the opening half, Andy Lickney. Well, Jim, it's a strange 7-2 score, and it's strange where the leading team has only 38 yards in total offense, and the team that's behind has 70. So not a whole lot of offense, not a whole lot of success. Let's start with Berwick. Uh, in the running game, uh, Benny Noor has one carry for minus one yard. Uh, Dre Wilk tried a jet sweep, got five yards on that. Brian Bankus, who has a nice game against Southern, seven carries for 17 yards. And uh, Jimmy Dondrup has three carries, uh, minus one. He had a nice five-yard plunge to get them out of the shadow of their goal post and then got stuffed after that, caught in the backfield. Then it comes back to Matt Lanzinski. Uh, he's been pressured a little bit, tried a few times going straight ahead. Two carries for just two tar- uh, two yards by my tally. So I have Berwick with 24 positive yards, minus two in the negative. Uh, net of 22 on 13 carries. Uh, not very strong in the running game, at least not so far. We'll see how the second half goes. Matt Lanzinski, thrown at 33%, 3 of 9, but no interceptions, and just 16 yards on the three completes. Sideways passes for the most part. Dre Wilkes has two catches, a 7-yarder and a 4-yarder, total of 11 on the two catches. Benny Norcott, the other, a 5-yard catch for him. Uh, Lanzinski struggling to find open receivers downfield. The forced to ground the ball on a couple of occasions, but not risking interceptions either. Trying to limit things by scrambling and bringing things forward rather than suffering the sacks. So for Berwick, you know, they're measly numbers. 16 yards in the air, 22 yards on the ground, a total of just 38 yards, but they're winning the turnover battle. They forced two interceptions and a fumble off of Crestwood. One of the interceptions went all the way for that the beautiful 55-yard Spencer Kishby interception return. That's been the difference in the ball game. For Crestwood, they look to have the running game going and then every now and then step away from it. And there's been some disaster. The passing game, just they'd be better off not throwing at all. 
two completes in seven attempts. And in those seven attempts, two were intercepted and a net of just three yards. So in the two completes, there was an eight-yard catch by Ethan Shudak. Nice little screen look. And Robert Knight caught one but was met by Brendan Boone in the backfield, and he lost five on that. So net of just three yards in the passing game on two completes. And again, compare it to the two interceptions, which has allowed Berwick to the lead. Passing for both teams, uh, just minuscule. Three yards for Crestwood net, 16 yards for Berwick net. Crestwood has been able to run effectively, but just can't seem to keep those drives going. Uh, Ethan Shudak, uh, quarterback last week, now doing running as a running back. 26 yards on eight carries. Actually, he did that running. And uh, Lincoln Bibla, Bibla has a carry for two. Quarterback Dennis Brendan for this game. He has two uh, nice scrambles, three in all, for 20 yards. And uh, basically where we are, uh, missing the one runner, Noah, Noah Schultz, who we're expecting to see quarterback. He has six carries for 19. So between Shudak and Schultz, that's been the bulk of the running, but 26 and 19 is not all that much for this highly touted offensive line for look to be strong. Quarterback with 20 yards, uh, where he's been able to break the pocket. That's 67 yards. I think Berwick's defense is kind of catching on, finding ways to slow that running game down, and you know should continue that way here in the second half. Now the chalkboards in both locker rooms probably filled with offensive plays as each team tries to mount some offense in the second half. Berwick has the lead at the break as a result of Spencer Kishbaugh's long return of an interception. 7-2 Bulldogs will check other scores with Raven Klein. When we return, you're listening to Bulldogs Football and Sports Radio, HLM. If you have a child that's interested in gymnastics, or if you've been practicing the sport for years, then Axis Gymnastics Academy is where you want to be. Their dedicated coaches will teach you everything you need to know to perform your best, from the basics of flexibility, form, and style, to advanced techniques that will improve your rhythm and style during a routine. Call Heidi Rebuck at Axis Gymnastics Academy at 570-441-5969. That's 570-441-5969. Now enrolling for beginner to advanced classes at 917 East 7th Street in Bloomsburg. Neighbor Fence Company has fencing for where you want it. Serving Columbia, Montour, and Luzerne counties. Neighbor Fence provides top quality residential and commercial fencing. Vinyl, chain link, wood, aluminum, and ornamental fencing. Plus vinyl railing and specialty products. Neighbor Fence Company, 1140 State Route 239 in Wapwalpin. Call 570-752-4423 or visit them online at NeighborFenceCompany.com. Neighbor Fence Company is a proud sponsor of local youth athletic teams. Riverview Block of Berwick with over 75 years of service can handle all your block and concrete needs. They carry all sizes of concrete block, including decorative E.P. Henry landscaping block. Their concrete is PennDOT approved and delivered with front discharge trucks. Riverview Block also carries masonry supplies, tools, cement, sand, and stone. For prompt delivery, call Riverview Block, 570-752-7191. Riverview Block is proud to support the Berwick Bulldogs. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Halftime from Crestwood Field in Berwick. The Bulldogs leading the Comets of Crestwood by a score of 7-2. For an update on other scores on the start of weekend number two of the high school football season, Raven Klein. Thank you, Jim. In high school football this evening, all scores are at halftime. At half, Southern Columbia leads Bloomsburg 28-0. Mifflinburg leads Central Columbia 21-0. Danville leads Midwest 55-6. Harrisburg leads Hazelton area 13-0. Dallas and Wyoming Valley West are tied at 14. Sealands Grove leads Jersey Shore 7-0. Shimokin leads Central Mountain 21-20. Loyal Sock leads Shik yeah, Shikalimi 35 to 0. Milton leads Warrior Run 33 to 7. Mount Carmel leads Hughesville 28 to 7. 
Northwest leads Montgomery 14 to 7, and North Schuylkill leads Blue Mountain 14 to 0. Back to you, Jim. Okay, thank you very much, Raven. Right here, it is 7 to 2, Berwick. On top of Crestwood, the Bulldogs play their home opener. Now another home game next week. We'll be taking on those uh, Cougars of Hazleton area. Berwick 7, Crestwood 2, back with the second half kickoff. You're listening. The Bulldogs football on Sports Radio, HLN. Forge Pub and Eatery on 11th and Mulberry in Berwick is where you need to go when you want a delicious homemade meal. Even the salad dressings are scratch made. Open every day at 11 with free delivery to the Berwick area. And check out their Facebook page to get the daily specials. They have a full bar, 10 beers on tap with 5 rotating seasonal brews, and an extensive selection of domestic and craft beers. It's the perfect place to go out with colleagues or for date night. Forge will always impress. Forge Pub and Eatery in Berwick is a proud supporter of the Berwick Bulldogs football team. Lehigh Valley Health Network has some great news for residents of Greater Hazleton and surrounding communities. LVPG, Hazleton Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, is now located in the Humboldt Industrial Park at Station Circle in Hazel Township. Their orthopedics and sports medicine experts provide complete orthopedic care and accept most insurances, including Geisinger Gold. LVPG, Hazleton Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, your partners in orthopedic care. To learn more, visit lvhn.org forward slash orthopedics or call 570-861-8710. Hi, this is Cassidy from the Independence Ford Service Department, Route 11 in Bloomsburg. Does your Ford or Lincoln vehicle need service? Having trouble getting an appointment at your usual service center? At Independence Ford, we can and will take care of all your service needs. Regardless of where you purchase your Ford or Lincoln vehicle, our goal is to get you back on the road. Give me a call for an appointment today at 784-1414. Come and get a great deal and total satisfaction. Independence Ford, better people, better prices. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas of Berwick, are your roofing experts for Luzerne, Columbia, and Montour counties. With 26 years of experience and great rates, why go anywhere else when Red's Roofing will get the job done right for your decks, siding, or roofing? Specializing in metal and rubber shingles, most roofing work is done in one day. So remember the name, Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas. Call Red's Roofing, 752-4351. Owner Harry Titus, a proud supporter of the Berwick football team. This is Berwick football coach Carm Francesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Kim Doyle and Andy Lickney from Crespin Field in Berwick. Moments away from the start of the second half. Both these teams trying to rebound from opening week losses. Berwick leading this one 7-2. to two. Neither team able to amount a lot of offense and Spencer Kishbaugh playing that linebacker spot with the play of the night he picks off the pass and goes 55 yards for the touchdown to give Berwick the lead Bulldogs will get the football to start this second half Andy looking through this first half and having seen Berwick last week what what's available to them offensively well, part of the problem, Jim, is the passing game's not reliable. Three of nine passing. Those three are sideways passes. He's not finding open receivers downfield, is Lonchinski. He's hesitant to throw it down there. I don't think we've seen anything thrown for more than five or ten yards. You have to keep going with that running game and hoping he can break it. Someone's got to step up and make the play. Now, again, they're going against a pretty stout defense. I think what you do is almost play for a stalemate and keep relying on your own defense to make the play. You know, if they can give you a short field somewhere, you hope to put some points on the board. But you know, Berwick's offense is kind of sputtering. I don't know what they do to get the running game going. You know, Sometimes you mix it up and try something different. Lanzinski's not really a running quarterback to give you that element. Uh, the standard running game seems to be being stopped by the Comets. So I don't really see many points coming out of the offense. I think you're going to have to rely on that defense to win this game. And, you know, they've really come to play. They've uh, limited this strong running game uh, to just 63 yards on the ground. They forced mistakes in the passing game. So we'll see how it plays out. But I don't have a solution to the offense right now. I just don't know how you... How you get that playmaker somewhere to step up. Maybe try to use the tight end. They have height advantages, and those are nice, easy passes. Ethan Chudak will kick off for Crestwood. 
Ryan Bankus, Dre Wilk deep for the Bulldogs. Second half is underway. The kick will be fielded at the 10-yard line. The return to the 20 and short of the 30-yard line as flags fly. Good kick coverage by Crestwood. And that's where Berwick will put it in play as Ryan Bank is on the return for the Bulldogs. What do you see as the penalty, Jim, thrown at the point of the tackle? Did a hand come up to the face mask? That would dramatically change field position. Or was it a late hold? It's a late hold. Berwick's going to be pushed back. And the Bulldogs have had enough problems offensively without poor field position. And they had pretty poor field position for much of that opening half. And they'll start with their first possession this half back at their 19-yard line. I'm a little surprised Benny Knorr only has one carry, Jim. You know, I had the impression he was going to be a, a key running back, you know, one of the stable there. Aiden Mason, I don't know if he's seen any action. Uh, maybe they aren't quite ready to play after sitting through the, the uh, COVID protocol, but, you know, that may change some things up if you give those guys a chance, but I just don't know if they're, you know, familiar with what's going on in the offense right now. And Benny Noor opens the second half at quarterback. Takes the snap, hands to Dre Wilk coming around, gets by one man, but can't get by the other. Got maybe two yards. So Benny Noor, who played the majority of the quarterbacking last season, was in there, took the snap, and handed off. Linsinski was on the field. He was split wide to the right side. We'll see if... Uh, it goes back to Matt Lundzinski at the quarterback. They gave a Wilk three yards to the 22-yard line. Second down and seven. Wilk wide to the left side. It is Lundzinski back at quarterback. Betty Norris in a slot to the right side. Lundzinski gives straight ahead and a good effort out near the 29-yard line. That's the first carry of the season for Aiden Mason. Yeah, I said we might need some change-ups, you know, for Berwick to show some offense. I mentioned Lonzinski is a running quarterback, isn't giving them that element, and we see uh, Benny Nora quarterback. I mentioned maybe Aiden Mason hasn't been playing. Maybe he gets his opportunity, and there he does move the chains. Out to the 29-yard line. First and 10 Bulldogs just underway here in the third quarter. Berwick leading Crestwood by a score of 7-2. As Dre Wilk splits wide to the left, Braden Boone wide right. Onsinski awaits the shotgun snap. Has it, fires it to Wilk, and it goes through his hands, but uh, really thrown very, very hard, just a couple of steps away yeah. from the receiver. Yeah, Wilk wasn't out wide. He was more like a, a very tight slot or a wing back, and it was thrown on the back shoulder and drilled as you mentioned Jim. Lanzinski wanted to get rid of it quickly. You can understand the, the thought process there, but that hard of a pass is just too hard to control. Second and ten, Berwick at their own 29-yard line. Dre Wilk wide to the right side. Slot to the left. Lanzinski out of the gun. Hands off. Straight ahead carry out to the 34-yard line. Aiden Mason once again picks up five on the play. Third and five coming for the Bulldogs. A little bit of a different look with Aiden Mason. More size. Get nice blocking in there inside the tackles. Very nice five-yard run. Third down call for the Dogs who have three receivers to the left. Nor Wilk, and Boone. Lanzinski has the snap looking that way. Has this man, the completion for a first down of Eddie Nor out to the 48-yard line. Quick hitter over the middle to the slot back, Benny Nor And the Bulldogs, with their biggest pass play of the night, get a first down to the 49, 15 yards on the reception. You mentioned the trips receiver to the wide side, up the top of the field toward the Comet sideline. He's the inside man. He does a short little post, gets inside position, makes the catch, and a nice run afterwards. So after the 15-yard reception, Noor lines up as the quarterback. 
with Lonsinski split wide to the right, and Nor will carry the football over midfield and carry tacklers inside the Crestwood 43-yard line. So Berwick mixing it up, showing some new looks in this second half, and the Bulldogs have a good thing going on their first possession. Didn't know how much they've had Benny Noor at quarterback. You know, it, it's sort of the look of Wildcat, uh, what he said there, because he's been at running back, but he's comfortable with the quarterback position. You can also have him in there, and if they key him running, he can stop and throw the ball. Nice eight-yard game there. Real nice run. Second and two, Berwick at the Crestwood. 43-yard line. Bulldogs move from our right to our left in this third quarter. On Zinsky. Fakes to Mason. Quick out to Dre Wilk. Makes one man miss and gets the first down inside the 40-yard line. Nicely done. Dre Wilk. He's elusive, Jim. Get him the ball on the sideline. We see him get a four-yard gain with three potential tacklers in his way. Here it's just a quick little sideways toss to get the two-yard gain needed for the chains. So this possession started at the Berwick 19-yard line. It's now at the Crestwood 39-yard line. First and 10, Berwick. Aiden Mason again in the backfield along with the quarterback, Lonzinski. Spencer Kishbaugh in motion. He'll lead the blocking for Mason, who turns the corner. The 35, the 30, down the sideline, and finally tiptoes out of bounds. They're going to mark it around the 28-yard line. But a fine run by Aiden Mason and Berwick, by far their best offensive possession of this game. Yeah, and a wonderful play there. You mentioned Kishbaugh in motion, and he kind of freezes over left tackle, left guard. Turns and gets the key block. He creates a problem there, and then Aiden Mason runs behind that. Timeout, Crestwood, 7.59 to go in the third. Berwick, 7. Crestwood, 2. You're listening to Bulldogs Football and Sports Radio, HLM. Welsh's Towing and Repair proudly supports the Berwick Bulldogs and wishes them a successful year. Welsh's Towing and Repair has a long tradition of helping. You can call Welsh's 24-7 at 759-9737. If you are in need of a tow, jump start, tire change, are locked out, or to request them on scene if you're in an accident, Welsh's accepts all major insurance and motor clubs, and they offer all types of preventive maintenance and state inspections for cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Welsh's Towing and Repair, South Mercer Street in Berwick, and at their South Center Storage Facility, Columbia Boulevard. In Berwick. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Bulldogs of Berwick struggled mightily on the offensive side during that opening half, but they've taken the second half kickoff for their own 19. They're now at the Crestwood 27 yard line. First and 10, 7.59 remaining in this third quarter. And the Bulldogs leading this one by a score of 7-2. to Berwick incorporating the talents of Benny Knorr and Aiden Mason, who did not play last week, now getting their chance here in the second half and making a difference. Knorr, one of three receivers to the right. Mason lines up in the backfield to the right of quarterback Matt Lonsinski, who awaits the shotgun snap. He has it. He fires a quick out, throws it over the head of one receiver, but it goes into the hands of Benny Noor at the 19-yard line. Andy, was he the intended receiver? No. They wanted to throw, well, I don't know. There was a tall receiver in trips in the middle. Dre Wilk actually caught it beyond that receiver who went up, almost like an odd basketball fake where you could throw it and then throw it over to the next man. In any case, the play is successful for an eight-yard gain. Second down and two. Bulldogs on the march and using some clock here in the third quarter. With running with 7.20. Remaining in the period, Crestwood's not had their hands on the football yet. Second and short, do you waste the play and try for the big play, or do you just satisfy yourself with getting that first down now? A little confusion, yeah. and now they have Spencer Kishball on a wing to the left, nor in a slot to the left. Kishball goes in motion, the call straight ahead, running hard and over tacklers for Aiden Mason inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Powerful run. 
He met a man at the linebacker level, dropped his right shoulder as he's slicing from right to left, and basically shook that man away. Won the collision, kept on going until eventually, you know, losing his balance at the end of that run. Beautiful run by Aiden Mason. Big time play. First and goal, Berwick at the Crestwood nine-yard line. Clock running, 6.37 to go in the third. Bulldogs try to add to a 7-2 lead. As Mason stays in there as the running back, he's to the left of Matt Lanzinski. Operates out of the gun. Kishball goes in motion and sets himself. Crestwood jumps across. Yes, they do. They're getting shaken a little bit, Jim. They need to make big plays. I'll tell you a big part of this uh, offensive scheme, and we're, we're noticing Aiden Mason running well and, and what Benny Nora is doing. But a big part of Spencer Kishbaugh, Jim, you're mentioning his motion, but he's motioning inside the tackles and freezing at a spot and becoming a key blocker either at the point of attack or backside. And they're running behind that additional blocking of Spencer Kishbaugh. First to goal, Berwick from the four-yard line. Lonsinski hands the ball to Mason, running hard, running yeah. over tacklers and getting toward the goal line. And do we have a touchdown? No He's indication. Good. Now an official deep in the end zone. No, that's not a touchdown call. Uh -oh. They took a good look at it. They ruled that he came up just short. Second and goal inches from the Crestwood goal line. They saw it wrong, Jim. He was in. And again, Kishpop over left tackle, freezes. They double team on the perimeter. Aiden Mason runs outside, wins the collision, gets across the goal line, but denied the call. Wodzinski now under center. Mason is the tailback in the eye. Mason gets the ball off the right side. This time he will not be denied. He's in for a Berwick touchdown as the Bulldogs have the lead. Powerful running. Berwick coming up with the blocks and he is throughout the entire drive. A lot of changes from the first half, changes in personnel, changes in play design. Keeps Comets off balance and a big change is the use of Spencer Kishbaugh inside the line but behind the line. It's sort of an H-back to give additional blocking at the point of attack and he's been a big difference maker. Brendan Hinkle will attempt the extra point. Hold by Boone, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Missiles down near the goal line. But are there flags? Berwick seems to be excited, and they're coming off the field. So if there is some sort of a penalty, it might be something after the fact. Or will it be a half the distance if Berwick chooses to go for two? Hey, guys, let us know what's going on. Personal foul against Crestwood on the kickoff, or, yeah, Crestwood's now leaving the field, so they'll move it 15 yards on the kickoff, Jim. 5.30 to go, third quarter, Berwick 14, Crestwood 2, you're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio, HLN. The Medicine Shop. The Berwick Medicine Shop at their new location. 500 Fowler Avenue, Berwick has your favorite pharmacist team, like Kim, who you've trusted for more than 20 years, and they've gotten even better. Free blister packs, free home delivery with no tips, and less than a 15-minute average wait time on prescriptions. Why would you go to the big box pharmacies where you might wait for days? Go to the name you know and trust, the Medicine Shop of Berwick, and follow their Facebook page. Berwick Medicine Shop proudly supports the Berwick Bulldogs. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. What a drive by Berwick to start this second half. 12 plays, 81 yards. Big plays along the way. A 15-yard pass. Matt Linsinski to Benny Knorr. A 12-yard run by Aiden Mason. Mason goes in from the one-yard line for the touchdown. Brendan Hinkle with the extra point. Bulldogs lead at 14 to 2, 530, remaining in the third. So not only did they score, but used up a lot of that third quarter clock. And now with the personal foul against Crestwood on that extra point, Eric will be kicking off from the Comets 45-yard line. And they have a decision. Brendan Hinkle could probably put this one into the end zone, but that's a touchback that only gains 30-some yards. 
Uh, does he try to pooch it up higher into the air and you try to catch this team inside the 20? I would boom it and put him at the 20. Yeah. It's not the worst. In high school, it isn't the worst at all. I agree. You never know what's going to happen in a return game. So Hinkle, two for two in extra points. Approaches the kick. Line drive kick. Bounces into the end zone for the touchback. So Crestwood will get the football for the first time in this third quarter with 5.30 remaining. And they have it at their own 20-yard line. You know, Jim, there was wonderful uh, play by the players, the athletes for Berwick, where guys really stepped up and made things happen, change in personnel. But you got to give the coaching staff a lot of credit. They were flat. They were dead in the first half of this game. They made major changes to the game plan. They inserted personnel in positions I don't think they were looking to do in this particular game. And boy, did it pay off in that drive. The change of play design, the change of personnel, the, the halftime adjustments tremendous by the staff. Crestwood, first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. The call goes to Noah Schultz playing the tailback in this game, and he gets very, very little off that left side. Taji Taylor, the first man there. Andrew Block is right there with him. One of the linebackers, I think it was Tristan English, coming up very hard. Uh, Sometimes you get that turnaround, you get that momentum going, you get the enthusiasm within all the players, and here it shows defensively with just a half a yard, if that, for Shudek. Second down, it was Schultz on the carry. Schultz. Second down and nine. Crestwood at their 21-yard line. Brendan Dennis under center. Gives to Schultz again and again. Not much doing. Yard maybe two. Spencer Kishbaugh among the people in on the play. Tristan English also there, Jim. He's playing middle linebacker for the first time. He's a, a rocket to the football. Saw him there on the last time going to the right. This time he's going to the left. But uh, credit all of Berwick defense. You can mention as many names as you want. Four or five people in there attacking uh, where that football's going. Third down and seven. This is a big play for Crestwood. They don't want to give the ball up after seeing Berwick drive to extend that lead. High formation behind Dennis. Third down call. Drops back to throw. Looking, looking. Here comes the pass rush. And they wrap him up at about the 25, maybe the 26-yard line. He's hesitant to pass, Jimmy. He knows he can do better with his legs if he rolls out and tries to run. So he bounced it wide. But Irwin was surrounding him out there. Blockus, Daji Taylor, others in the area. Again, three people as part of that tackle. Keep him short of the chain by four yards. Wait, Andrew Blockus has had a terrific game. Yes, he has. Shudak will be back to do the punting. Smolnik does the long snapping. Ethan Shudak back at the 12-yard line of Crestwood. Snap is a good one. And the kick is a good one. To the far side. Gray Wilk at the 33 to the 40 and dragged out the 45-yard line. So Bowick gets a three and out from their defense. They get good field position after the punt return. And with 3.19 to go in the third, they take over at their 45 with a 14-2 lead. First half, they let some punts bounce. This time, they catch it in the air and make that nice return, does Trey, w uh, Trey Wilk. Nice moving up the field after he makes the sure-handed catch, and he's always dangerous. He's one of those players who can take it all the way on any play. 12-play scoring drive. Last time, Burley had it. Heavy dose of Aiden Mason running the football. We saw Benny Knorr at quarterback for a couple of snaps. We saw him Make a nice catch for a 15-yard grab. We'll see how they play it here. Aiden Mason is the running back. They'll have Lonsinski lined up to the left, and it will be Noor taking the shotgun snap. Slot to both sides. On the 45, Benny Noor takes the snap, carries the football, and will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, that is a good yes. defensive play. Jordan Aiden, Jim. He really did come up. We Aiden. haven't heard heard much of these guys. Aiden Jordan. Aiden Jordan. Yeah, we haven't heard much about this defensive front. Some of these are big time players with big names. And you know, that time he did come through. 
stopping the uh, attempted run of quarterback sort of from Wildcat in the backfield. Second down and 11. Berwick at their 44-yard line. Slot to either side. It's Lonsinski who takes the snap and throws, and it's beyond the reach of Braden Boone at the 49-yard line. So now third down and 11, Berwick, back at their 44. Timing's just not all there. He got the ball, looked real good, took it and threw it, but threw it before Boone was able to make his cut on the short out pattern. And Boone extends with the dive for the pass, but it's beyond his reach. Third down and 11, Bulldogs at their 44. Don't think you get too risky here, Jim. The defense has been stout. Need 10 yards. See what happens here on this play. Onsinski has the snap. Drops back to throw. Steps up tall in the pocket. Rolls right. Throws downfield. Off the fingertips of Benny Noor. Ball just a little beyond his reach, and he was open. That would have been a huge play at the Crestwood 40. The quarterback forced out of the pocket, scrambles to the right, keeps his composure, and does drill it downfield to Benny Noor. I don't know if it's a little bit behind him or whatever, but he can't make that catch. It's a little too tough to finish off that play. Robert Knight back in single safety. Bulldogs have had problems with these snaps. Two bad ones. This one is perfect. The kick is away. Line drive away from Knight. Rolls out of bounds inside the 25-yard line at the 23. So that's where the Comets will put it in play with 2.21 to go in the third quarter. And Bowick leading this one 14-2. Do they stay with their original game plan of you know, putting the, the burden on the offensive line to create holes for these running backs? Shudak as well as, as Noah Schultz. It was effective in the first half. The question is, do you continue with that patience? Now, if you step out of it, you risk the passing game that has been uh, just faltering for them. Schultz is wide to the right side. Brendan Dennis, a wide receiver playing quarterback, remains under center. Gives the ball to Shudak off the left side. Good first down carry. Ethan Shudak running hard is out to the 33-yard line. He did run that one well. Knifing action from center over toward left tackle. Gets the hole at the line of scrimmage, and that will move the chains. A very nice first down run. Ten yards in the carry by Ethan Shudak. There is a Berwick player down on the play. It looks like a cramp. They're working that way. Try and see the number, but I'm obscured. I think it's Taji Taylor that they're working on. You mentioned it sort of left cap. So we have a time out on the field with 2.11 remaining, but uh, Taji is, is up. And he is working, working it off. Tries to get the crowd into it. 14 to 2 is the is the Berwick lead. The, the way this game is going, and obviously there's a long way to go. 2-11 to go in the third. It's not over yet, but that 14-2 lead looks big. It is. It's a two touchdown type of lead. And uh, Berwick's been playing stout defense, although that last 10 yard burst by Ethan Shudak has to give a little momentum swing to the Comets. They have it at their own 33 yard line with a first and 10. Oh, Taylor out of the lineup. They continue to look to him. Schultz in motion, right to left. Berwick coming on a blitz. Shudak makes one man miss, but then he's buried the 33-yard line. Boy, Tristan English almost really blew up that play. He came on a blitz and just couldn't quite square up against Shudak. But Berwick filled nicely and no gain on the play. He hit him about six yards deep in the backfield at full speed, but you often don't have, you know, all of your targeting ability when you're coming that hard. Slows him down enough that even though Shuda gets back to the line of scrimmage, they'll squelch the play there. Second out and 10. Comets at their 33. Offset eye behind Brendan Dennis. He gives the ball to Schultz, coming from a wide receiver position. 
and Noah Schultz is brought down at about the 36-yard line. Yeah. Person chasing it as it slowed down at the line of scrimmage. It was Tristan English from the middle linebacker position. Secondary coming up to help as well. Uh, long two, maybe three yards if you're being generous on the run. Third down and seven. Crestwood trying to get something going offensively. Trailing Berwick 14 to two as we go under a minute remaining in the third quarter. Schultz, quarterback to the opener. But he's playing wide receiver and running back. Wide receiver right now. He goes in motion to the left. Here's the third and seven. Dennis back to throw. Sets up a screen to the right side. And overshoots his man. Shoot act. Dangerous. And Overshot it, Jim. And he touched the ball. And it almost became tip drill as Berwick read that screen very, very quickly. And they know this team is hesitant to throw downfield. They just don't have the arm in there. Not an experienced quarterback. So they might be thinking screen or draw in the third and long situation. He lofted that ball to get it over a defender. He ended up going over his receiver and almost into Berwick's hands. Chris Smolnick gets set to snap the ball to Ethan Shudak, who's back at the Comets 21-yard line. Good snap. Very, very high kick of beauty. Fair catch by Braden Boone lost the handle momentarily comes down on it and Berwick will take over the football with 28 seconds remaining in the third quarter first and 10 at their own 32 yard line Bulldogs lead this one 14 to 2 you have to have the courage to feel that it's up high it's in the light but Brendan Boone has the good hands the problem is, is it sort of came down after the fair catch as he went to the ground and kind of squirted out the back. But he downed himself, and you're afforded that protection with the fair catch. Comets came on in and gave him a little bump. The, the fans wanted some reaction, but I'd have given the same bump as well. Ball looks like it might be ruled as a fumble, but he was actually downed on the field before it uh, was dangerously out. Bulldogs from there, 32. Slot to the left, wide receiver right. Lonsinski out of the gun. Give straight ahead. Gain out to the 35, maybe the 36-yard line. And what may be the final play, Aiden Mason gets the carry, picks up about three. And that will do it for the third quarter of play with the score. Berwick 14, Crestwood 2. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio, HLM. Yannick Real Estate is your full-service real estate agency. Buying, selling, residential, commercial, multifamily, land, and rental management. Call Yannick Real Estate. Owner Mike Yannick, a veteran himself, served his country and has been serving this area for decades. Mike and his staff will guide you through the real estate process. Veterans, be sure to check the VA loan options. Yannick Real Estate, your full service real estate agency 1232 west front street in berwick call 759-3300 this is berwick football coach carm de francesco you are listening to bulldogs football on sports radio hlm berwick bulldog football whlm bloomsburg wbwx berwick hlm berwick has the football to start this fourth quarter they have the lead at 14 to 2 they have a second down and seven at their own 30 they'll move from our left to our right this period Boy, what they'd love to put together is a drive like they did to begin the third quarter that used up so much of that third quarter clock. It would be ideal, Jim. It would help the defense, but I think the defense alone has been able to put the stops to Crestwood, which has impressed me even more than the offensive change of pace that we've seen here in the second half. They want to match their third quarter type of play, and they should be able to take this one on into a victory. Betty Norris in a slot to the left side. Dre Wilk outside of him. Matt Lonsinski operates out of the gun. Aiden Mason to his right. Second and seven, Berwick. First snap of the fourth quarter. Lonsinski hands the ball to Mason. Spins by one man. Powers out over the 40-yard line. Yes, he does, Jim. And the man who's telling you where the play is going is Spencer Kishbaugh. Comes in motion, stops at a certain point behind the lineman, and that's usually the point of attack, or Aiden Mason may see something open otherwise. He's giving a helpful double team. He's using his strength as a blocker to assist the line in creating the seam, and Aiden Mason, with his power running, makes the rest go. Third down and one. Berwick at their 41-yard line. 
I formation. Wonsinski under center. Tristan English is the fullback. Mason gets the call and has... Should have it. Just about enough for the first down, I believe. Yeah, I thought they had a little bit of a surge, and they are going to move the chains without looking much more closely at it. There was penetration outside, but they could have been in to get Aiden Mason pretty much running over the right guard. And he comes like a freight train from deep in the backfield, and he's going to assure his team he's getting that first down. The ball at the Berwick 43-yard line. Again, Bulldogs would love to put together a long time consuming drive points or no points they have the lead at 14 to 2 from there 43 Wonsinski has the snap gives to Aiden Mason Mason up the middle and gets a couple to the 45 maybe the 46 yard line nice stick in there by the linebacker full cackle cackle Kakalechik. Jim, I practiced that all day. All <laughs> and then, day. And then you choke. <laughs> and I choked when it finally came to it. The Kakalechik really fronted him well, and yet Aiden Mason will win a little bit of the battle of the bush and get two yards out of it. Aiden Mason looks very good. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Second and seven, Berwick at their own 46. He's running with confidence, Jim. He didn't always do that in his career. He had some fumble problems, and this year he just looks to be bursting on through. They're coming on a blitz. Wonsinski tries to beat it, gets a quick out to Wilk, and he is covered Ball. and gives up the football. Westwood picks it up, and they're going to go for a touchdown down the right side. Dre Wilk trying to get away from a tackler. Coughed up the football. Crestwood returns at 35 yards as Brendan Dennis is playing quarterback and secondary. And oh, what a huge play. All of a sudden, this is very much a game with 9.45 to go. Al Burks is going to have to get back to what they were doing, Jim. They tried to throw it. Dre Wilk often makes people miss and then trying a little too hard that time gets the football knocked away from him and it's isolated over on the far side and then Dennis able to pick that up and take it all the way for the score. Ethan Chudak will attempt the extra point as Crestwood gets on the board for the first time snap placement kick is up and the kick is good time on the field 9.45 to go. Berwick 14. Crestwood 9. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio. HLM. Lehigh Valley Health Network has some great news for residents of Greater Hazleton and surrounding communities. LVPG, Hazleton Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, is now located in the Humboldt Industrial Park at Station Circle in Hazel Township. Their orthopedics and sports medicine experts provide complete orthopedic care and accept most insurances, including Geisinger Gold. LVPG, Hazleton Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, your partners in orthopedic care. To learn more, visit lvhn.org forward slash orthopedics or call 570-861. 8710. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. Huge play by Brendan Dennis of Crestwood. As he picks up a Trey Wilk fumble and goes 41 yards for the score. Everything going Berwick's way at that point. Now the Bulldogs lead is just 14 to 9, and there's a long way to go. 9:45. Got to put it out of their head. Got to put it out of their head. Make it clean here on the specialty team play, and get back to the offense that's been successful for them with the running game. Shudak will kick it off. Nice kick to Wilk back at the eight-yard line to the 10, to the 20, the 25, and. Knocked out of bounds across the way. So Trey Wilk with a pretty good return. Now the Berwick offense back on the field. A lot of time left. 940. You were talking about that long time consuming drive, Jim. I wasn't that concerned when it was a two score type of game, but now after the interception return for a touchdown by the Comets, they're now within that uh, one touchdown to put them ahead. I think now that long time consuming drive really does come into play. Aiden Mason has been the, the workhorse here in the second half. I'd continue to go with him. Try to pound, running behind 
Spencer Kishbaugh, who's becoming an extra blocker as a motion man. An H-back setting up at the point of attack. First and ten Bulldogs at their own 30. Wanzinski gives the ball to Dre Wilk, trying to sweep the left side, and Ethan Stoltz comes up from his safety position, makes the play right at the line of scrimmage. I think the thought process among the coaches is Dre Wilk wants redemption after the fumble. He had a nice kick return. Let him carry one. Let him use his talents wide on a straight running play. But the Comets respond well. Among Strong, as you mentioned, Jim, a good hit by Ethan Stoltz. Second out and ten. Berwick. Ball just over their own 30-yard line. We'll go under nine minutes to go in the game when the snap comes. Benny Noor in a slot to the right. Wilk outside of him. Onzinski gives the ball to Aiden Mason. Straight ahead. Not much doing. Good defense by the Comets. He gets to about the 34-yard line. Making the 35, but there's not much yeah. doing. But he's having that kind of night. Even five yards on a play like that. Now third down and five Berwick. And Aiden Mason runs hard, and he has size. 212-pounder with a good six, seven yards deep in the backfield coming out of the eye and getting blocking at the point of attack. He's then going to push whoever isn't blocked back a few yards. Big third down play coming. Onsinski has the snap. Fires to the sideline. Incomplete. Poorly thrown into the turf. Braden Boone went down, tried to make the play. Boy, the momentum has changed. It's on the other side of the field. It's wearing the white and the red. Yes, it has. Berwick's timing has not been good in the passing game. Even again there, you mentioned it's, it's never a great shotgun snap. He has to get control. It doesn't always come out of his hand well. Even if he got it, they were short of the chains. you got to at least get to the chains to make it look like you're, you're there. Benny Noor gets the snap, gets the kick away. Very, very high. Schultz fields at the 33-yard line to the 35, up the middle, 40, 45 to midfield into public territory. Noah Schultz with a good return. He had a 36-yarder earlier. And now Crestwood down just 14-9 with the ball in Berwick territory. 8-0-1 to play. Catch the punt, have a little bit of room. You can often find that lane, get things going. Berwick able to trip him up, but boy, they, they needed to get him down deeper. They crossed the 50. First and 10 for the Comets. Berwick's been very, very tough against their running game. And they haven't been able to throw the ball. Brendan Dennis gives the ball to Shudak off the right side. Tristan is yeah. there first. Nice hit, maybe a yard of the play. He is a rocket. He is a rocket from that middle linebacker, Jim. He's just reading it through, seeing which way that running back is going, and he's going to meet him near the line of scrimmage. He'll give the running back half a yard, but Tristan English going, you know, from the middle of the field toward the right tackle, and he uh, made a big play. Second down and nine. Crestwood at the Berwick 46-yard line. Wide receiver to either side. Eye formation. Dennis gives the shootout again. This time running room. And he gets inside the 40. Close to a first down. Close but short. But in a situation where you might be in fourth down territory if they have this big offensive line. I'd pound this one twice with one of those running backs and use that to grind it out type of attitude. Yeah, they can make you look like Swiss cheese sometime when they get those big linemen opening the holes and the backs do run hard. Third down and two. Crestwood at the Berwick 39-yard line. Berwick clinging to a five-point lead here in the fourth with 6.45 already. Quarterback keeper straight ahead by Dennis. Flags on the play. Saw a player try to get off late for Crestwood. Maybe that's the call. Maybe. The coach, Mark Angeli, is sort of shaking his hands like, how could we do that? How could we do that to make such a mistake? I don't know if he got it on the quarterback sneak, and I don't think I'd be running this quarterback. It will move it back, Jim. Too many players on the field. They'll call it an illegal substitution. He wasn't participating, so it'll be five yards rather than 15. But that changes the complexion of down and distance here. 
instead of third and two, as the play would have been. And after the sneak, he was close. I don't know if he'd have got it or not. It becomes a third and seven. I'm still, if I'm coaching the Comets, going with two running plays. I'm not thinking of passing. I would pound it twice, and I'd go for it on fourth down. Six minutes and 40 seconds left. They need a touchdown. Third down play coming. Bryce Feeney, wide to the left. Player in the slot to the left. Eye formation behind Brendan Dennis, who's under center. Play action, back to pass. Dumps the pass over the middle. Caught at the Bullock 37-yard line by Josh Hilp, just short of the first down yardage. But it is short, gives Burwick the opportunity. I said I'd go for it on fourth down. Oh, are they going to move to change? They are moving to change. They are. They needed seven, and they got seven. And how about Hilp making his first catch of the game? And what a time for Crestwood. I like the notion of bootleg. I didn't think they'd pass. They bootlegged the quarterback to give him time. Rolling to the left, throws to the left and side end. On that side, is doing an out pattern. Nice design. Good, easy pass catch. Hilp now wide to the right. Noah Schultz is the tailback in the eye formation. Burley come in on the blitz. Schultz gets the call off the right side, and he is hit and hit hard for a loss in the play. Yep, big number four, Spencer Kishbaugh, Jim. He's been an impact player on offense. We know he's an impact player on defense. Had an interception for a touchdown in this game. Burley was blitzing up the middle. He was staying back. He had to read it. They were running wide. They'd have run past the blitz. It wouldn't have helped. But Kishba sees the play, comes up hard, and sends that runner back. Second down and 11. Crestwood at the Berwick 38-yard line. Josh Hilp wide to the right. Bryce Feeney wide left. High formation. Second down and 11 call. Berwick showing blitz. They come hard. Dennis throws the pass, has his man a completion to about the 33-yard line. They'll pick up about five on the play. Magnus Pipla, big tight end. We haven't seen much of him. We've been seeing his blocking. But, Jim, they still need a good six yards to get the change here on third down. So Burrow will trade that play. Get the lofted over on quick play action and the release to the tight end just going straight down the field. Berwick makes the tackle quickly. Third and six. Long count. Dennis hands off. Off the left side. Strong run by Shudak, but he won't get the first down and fourth down coming. Tristan English caught him from the side and had to sort of pull him on back and wait for help. It'll be fourth and a healthy yard. Short two, a long one. So maybe the play of this game. They'll be under four minutes when this snap is taken. Berwick leading 14 to 9. The ball at the Bulldog 29 yard line. Fourth and two for Crestwood. Watch the cadence, Jim. Berwick can't jump off sides. Shudak is the tailback of the eye. Berwick showing blitz. And movement flags down, maybe against the Comets. It is the legal procedure. Boy, that changes things. Fourth and seven. I mentioned Berwick has to hold themselves from jumping off sides. They were barking to count, barking to count, trying to get the jump, but it induced movement from an interior lineman. Berwick all saw it. They're quickly pointing. The flags and whistles come out, and the penalties marked off. Timeout? Let's see. Personnel changes, that's for sure. Will this team be forced to pass here on fourth and long? And they are talking it over, yeah, and they're going to call timeout. They will have one remaining. We'll keep it here with 3.30 to go. And possibly the game on the line with this call coming. Fourth and seven will be the call for Crestwood at the Berwick 34-yard line. 3.30 remaining in the game. Brendan Dennis has had a nightmare first half, Jim, but here in the second half, he's completed his last two in succession. But they've been coming at unpredictable times. They've been coming with some nice play action, and it's worked well. 
I wouldn't call him a hot quarterback. In fact, you wonder, did they change back to last week's quarterback here on the obvious passing down? They've taken time out to really consider what they want to do. Fourth and about seven. You know, I know the power of this, the way this team can run, but seven's a long way to go. The quarterback, if you roll him out, has a propensity to want to run himself. So you can have that sort of run-pass option with the quarterback if he doesn't like what he sees downfield. Ball is going to be in the middle of the field. We've seen him roll left and do a nice job, but that's not natural for a right-handed quarterback. A lot of options here. Which way did they go? Fourth and seven. Brendan Dennis is still the quarterback, and he is going to operate on the shotgun with a slot to either side. Knight goes in motion left to right. Dennis has the snap. Pump fake. Looking long downfield into traffic. The ball tripped and it's picked off. Boyk has the interception. Trey Wilk on the return to the 30, to the 36-yard line. Wilk with the interception. Boyk has the ball with the lead. 3-8 the play. Well, for those who aren't seeing it live, Jim, you had to take a deep, deep breath because he had enough time. He faked a little sideways pass. He looked like he was going to go deep downfield. Instead, he went mid-range. And I thought there was a good chance of that being completed. His receiver went up high, but Magnus Bilba couldn't get high enough. It went off his hands back to Dre Wilk and then the return. So Dre Wilk in a good enough position. But boy, if Magnus Bilba is an inch or two taller, that's completed and the drive continues. Ehrlich takes over. Remember, Cresswell with just one timeout remaining. 3.18 to play. Bulldogs at their own 36-yard line. Slot to the right, eye formation. Wonsinski, under center. Gives the ball off to Aiden Mason. Mason running hard. Gets to the 41-yard line. Five yards in the first down pickup. Yeah, upended, though, by that safety. He's been coming up all game. Ethan Stoltz is really putting a hit on him. Tristan English as a fullback in the I formation, giving conditional blocking. We know how physical a player he is. We've seen a lot of him defensively. There leads the block. And Aiden Mason, good security with the football, takes it for a good five yards. Second down and five. Berwick, Benny Noor, enters the offense. He plays a little bit of everywhere on the offensive side. He's going to line up as the tailback in the eye. Tristan English ahead of him. Berwick using the clock. It's on their side. Lonsinski under center. Gives the ball to Noor off the left side and not much doing. No. In fact, nothing. Ethan, Brought down to the 41. Ethan Shudak crashing down hard from an outside linebacker position. Another man also. Comets seem to be shooting the gaps at this point, Jim. They're, they're in sort of desperation defense. So really nowhere for Benny Noor to go. His fourth carry of the game, I'm surprised they went with him because he hasn't had as many touches. I'd be worried about ball security, but he held on very well despite the hard hit. A first down might do it for Berwick. The clock running, 1.45 to go. Third down and five. They have it at their own 41-yard line. They lead Crestwood 14 to nine. Trey Wilk wide left. Spencer Kishball on a wing to the right. And we have a timeout Berwick. 131 to go, Bulldogs by five. You're listening to Berwick Football and Sports Radio, HLM. Forge Pub and Eatery on 11th and Mulberry in Berwick is where you need to go when you want a delicious homemade meal. Even the salad dressings are scratch made. Open every day at 11 with free delivery to the Berwick area. And check out their Facebook page to get the daily specials. They have a full bar, 10 beers on tap with five rotating seasonal brews, and an extensive selection of domestic and craft beers. It's the perfect place to go out with colleagues or for date night. Forge will all Always impress. Forge Pub and Eatery in Berwick is a proud supporter of the Berwick Bulldogs football team. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. We've had a lot of big calls in this second half. We've got another one upcoming. 131 to go in the game. Berwick leading Crestwood 14 to 9. 
Bulldogs face a third down and five. They have it at their own 41-yard line. Yeah, you have a couple options, Jim. Me, as a conservative coach, I'm pounding this with Aiden Mason and saying, get the six yards we need. And if you come up a yard short, you have a tough fourth down decision with about a minute to go in the game. But there's also the option for some trickery. You know, we know Benny Knorr has quarterback. You can put him in the Wildcats, show like you're going to run and let him throw the ball. We'll see what Carm Francesco comes up with on this very critical play. Kim D'Ambra is in there as a blocking back. It's Knorr who's going to take the Wildcat snap. Here's the third and five. He's going to run with the football, and he's going to be stopped at the 43-yard line. Picked up a couple on the play. Fourth down. We'll see if Crestwood will use their final timeout. They do. So they have no timeouts remaining. 123 left to go in the game. Berwick's have problems with yeah. snaps on punts. One resulted in that uh, two points for Crestwood. Sailed over the head of Benny Knorr in the end zone. Another set up Crestwood in Berwick territory. The Bulldogs able to get that one back. So the snap and the punt, crucial here. Yeah. Assuming you punt. <laughs> if it's my team with this personnel, I don't know if I punt, Jim. The defense has been strong. If you don't come up, you're still going to run time off that clock. It'll be under a minute until Crestwood gets a snap. They have no timeouts. Their offense is running the ball. You stack against the run, and you try to make three, four plays and end it that way. You punt. You risk the bad snap. Well, you know, you're just going to have to go back and get it. You risk a return. You miss, you know, risk missed tackles. But the normal play, you know, people playing it by, by the book, punts obvious. Surprisingly, Noah Schultz is not deep. It is Robert Knight mm. deep. Schultz has had a couple of strong punt returns. So here we go. Snap all important. It's there. Benny Nor gets the kick away. It bounces. Knight lets it roll, goes out of bounds. Terrific punt by Benny Nor. Out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Carm Francesco had faith in the execution of his punting unit. It was a good snap, right on the money. Benny Knorr angles it toward the sideline to prevent a return. You didn't need distance. You had to make sure that you got it off. You wanted some yardage. Now the Comets have to go, you know, this uh, long field from where they're spotting it at the 25-yard line uh, with no timeouts and basically a run-oriented offense. I don't know if you can pass against Berwick. They might have to try. First and 10. Crestwood at their 25. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Dennis awaits the shotgun snap. Has it. Rolls right. Big pass rush. He's going to be sacked. Back at the 16-yard line. Big play by Alex Hacker, Jim. We mentioned his move to defensive end. He saw this quarterback rolling and wanting to come his way. He squares up and drives him back for about an 11-yard loss and keeps the clock running under a minute. Crestwood hurries to the line of scrimmage. Dennis back to throw. Sets the screen up, and it's read by Berwick. The pass complete to Shudak, and he's brought down in his tracks to lose a couple more. I think it's Blancas was in the area of the screen, and again, the clock will continue. It's a completed pass. So while it is completed, it's uh, right at the line of scrimmage. Third and 19 for Crestwood. Back of their 16-yard line. 20 seconds remaining. Dennis. And flag down the play. Look like movement on the part of the Comets. They will make a difficult situation even more so if that is the call. Now it looks like it's going to go the other way. Offside against Berwick. Out to the 20-yard line. So third down and 14 for Crestwood. 16 seconds to play. Desperation time for the Comets. Dennis has the snap. Back to throw. Looking long. Incomplete. 
Incomplete coverage by Braden Boone of the Bulldogs as the pass intended for Evan Fay. You see in his first action, there is an injured player on the field for Crestwood. They will have, following this injury timeout, fourth and 14 with 11.7 seconds to go. Berwick leading 14 to nine. Injury to Brendan Dennis, Jim. So the quarterback who they've been going with all game is gonna have to come out for a play. If they had a timeout, they could take a timeout and allow him to re-enter. But because they don't have timeouts, here on this uh, desperation, fourth and 14 or 15 or so, they're going to have to do it with somebody else throwing the ball. That somebody else is likely to be their usual starting quarterback. Yep. In Noah Schultz. So here we go. 11.7 seconds remaining. Fourth and 14. Crestwood. Back near their 20-yard line. Safeties for Berwick, 20 yards off. Just in case anyone manages to break free, they're going to split the field in half. Man-to-man -man coverage uh, underneath that with four different players. Schultz takes the snap, throwing long down the far side. Berwick's all over it, almost an interception. Getting his hands on the football was Slavinsky, and then he was hit, but Berwick gets the stand they needed. They'll take over the football, 6.5 seconds to go. Press without a timeout. And boy, how sweet is this for the Bulldogs after losing that opener on the road last week to come out here and come up with a victory. Defensively, they've been magnificent. They had one really, really good offensive drive in the game. And they're going to get a win over a team that beat them 35-0 right here last season. Tremendously impressive, Jim. You now the resumes of these teams, the players they've had back. It's going to be victory formation and take the knee for the quarterback and then watch those final ticks go off the clock. Onsinski does just what Andy described, and that will do it. The final score. Berwick, 14. Crestwood, 9. Stay with us. We will have the scoring, the stats, and the scoreboard with Raven Clyde. You're listening to Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio, HLM. Hi, this is Cassidy from the Independence Ford Service Department, Route 11 in Bloomsburg. Does your Ford or Lincoln vehicle need service? Having trouble getting an appointment at your usual service center? At Independence Ford, we can and will take care of all your service needs. Regardless of where you purchase your Ford or Lincoln vehicle, our goal is to get you back on the road. Give me a call for an appointment today at 784-1414. Come and get a great deal and total satisfaction. Independence Ford, better people, better prices. Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas of Berwick, are your roofing experts for Luzerne, Columbia, and Montour counties. With 26 years of experience and great rates, why go anywhere else when Red's Roofing will get the job done right for your decks, siding, or roofing? Specializing in metal and rubber shingles, most roofing work is done in one day. So remember the name, Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas. Call Red's Roofing, 752-4351. Owner Harry Titus, a proud supporter of the Berwick football team. If you have a child that's interested in gymnastics, or if you've been practicing the sport for years, then Axis Gymnastics Academy is where you want to be. Their dedicated coaches will teach you everything you need to know to perform your best, from the basics of flexibility, form, and style, to advanced techniques that will improve your rhythm and style during a routine. Call Heidi Rebuck at Axis Gymnastics Academy at 570-441-5969. That's 570-441-5969. Now enrolling for beginner to advanced classes at 917 East 7th Street in Bloomsburg. Neighbor Fence Company has fencing for where you want it. Serving Columbia, Montour, and Luzerne counties. Neighbor Fence provides top quality residential and commercial fencing. Vinyl, chain link, wood, aluminum, and ornamental fencing. Plus, vinyl railing and specialty products. Neighbor Fence Company, 1140 State Route 239 in Wapwalpin. Call 570-752-4423 or visit them online at NeighborFenceCompany.com. Neighbor Fence Company is a proud sponsor of local youth athletic teams. This is Berwick football coach Carm DeFrancesco. You are listening to Bulldogs football on Sports Radio HLM. Berwick Bulldog football. WHLM Bloomsburg. WBWX Berwick. HLM. 
Merlick in their home opener defeats Crestwood by a score of 14 to 9. The Bulldogs early in this one had a punt return by Braden Boone, a good return, but he fumbled the football. Crestwood took over, eventually had a fourth and goal at the Berwick three-yard line. And the Bulldog defense, which was magnificent all night long, stopped Ethan Chudak, Benny Knorr leading the way, and the first quarter ended with no score. In the second quarter, Noah Schultz of Crestwood with a 36-yard punt return to the Berwick six-yard line, but then another huge defensive play, this time by Andrew Blockus, who played well at defensive tackle for the Bulldogs, creating a fumble, picking up the fumble. Berwick stopped the threat. Later in that second quarter, Berwick backed up to their own nine-yard line. Fourth down play, forced to punt, and the snap sailed over the head of Benny Knorr. And Crestwood had a 2-0 lead as it sailed through the end zone. Berwick not getting anything going offensively. In fact, they had just 38 total yards in that opening half. They needed a big play from the defense. And stepping forward was Spencer Kishbaugh. He picked off a Brendan Dennis pass, raced 55 yards for a touchdown with 6.52 to go in the half. Brendan Hinkle with the extra point. Berwick went into the break with a 7-2 lead. And then the Bulldogs finally got that offensive going in the second half as they took the second half kickoff. Aiden Mason making his appearance, carrying the ball steadily. Bulldogs a 12-play, 81-yard drive. Mason had a 12-yard run. Matt Lanzinski hit Benny Noor with a 15-yard pass. Eventually, Aiden Mason finished it off with a one-yard run. So Berwick used much of the third quarter on that drive. Brendan Hinkle kicked the extra point. 14-2 is the Berwick lead. That is the Independence Four drive of the game. It looked like the Bulldogs had this one, but then misfortune as Dre Wilk caught a short pass, tried to make a move on a defender, instead fumbled the football. Brendan Dennis recovered, raced 41 yards for the touchdown. Ethan Shudak kicked the extra point, cutting Berwick's lead to 14-9, still with a long way to go, 9-45. Crestwood would get the ball in Berwick territory one more time. They faced a fourth and seven at the Bulldog 34-yard line. 3.40 to go. Brendan Dennis threw it downfield. Dre Wilk with the interception. Berwick took over, used much of the clock. Crestwood got it one more time in a desperate situation. Can't do anything. Bulldogs win it. Final, Berwick 14, Crestwood 9. Stats. In tonight's game, Andy Lickney. Well, Jim, they come out relatively even. Berwick does have the edge, though, with 138 yards in offense. They hold Crestwood to 103, but it seems to be a game of defenses overall and then turnovers. And Berwick's defense outplayed Crestwood, and they certainly did force the turnovers. Three interceptions plus a fumble recovery for Berwick compared to just the one fumble uh, that Berwick did have. They were forcing the turnovers and really playing stout against the run. For Crest with 30 rushes, 89 yards, 5 of 14 passing with the three interceptions for a net of just 14 yards on the five completions. number of the passes ended up being negative yardage. So 14 in the air, 89 on the ground, total of 103. For the running backs, Ethan Shudak at 14 carries for 49 yards. We saw Noah Schultz with 10 carries for 24. Lincoln Bibolo, the freshman fullback, had one tote for two. And then it was Brendan Dennis, the surprise starting quarterback. Five runs for him, a net of 14, suffering a couple sacks along the way. So Berwick uh, knew they were going to be challenged by this big, strong offensive line. And solid running backs meets that challenge and holds this strong Comet running game to just 89 yards. Against the pass, they were tremendous. Comets uh, just that's not their game. 5 of 14, 3 interceptions, 14 yards. Magnus Bibla caught a 5-yarder. Robert Knight lost one for 5 yards to so wipe those out. Ethan Shudak caught 2, an 8-yarder, and one that lost the yard, so 7 net for him. And Josh Hilp caught a 7-yarder to continue a drive. 14 yards net in the passing, 89 on the ground, 103 total. 
but the one, two, three interceptions and the forced fumble. Berwick wins the takeover battle. For Berwick, they had 22 yards rushing at half. They finished the game with 94. They had 16 yards passing at half. They finished with 44 there. A total of 138 yards on the game to compare to their 38 yards at halftime. So significant personnel changes, game plan changes, some wonderful coaching. Puts Berwick in charge in the second half. The running game, give it to Aiden Mason. No carries in the first half, but 12 for 61 yards in the second half. Tremendous effort as he's running behind. Strong blocking. Uh, did, did a great job uh, for his team coming in and really showing the muscle and the speed. Benny Knorr had five carries for nine yards, all in the second half. Ryan Bank is 17 first half yards on seven carries. Jimmy DeAndra three carries for minus one. The team took a kneel down, uh, minus one on that, and Matt Lonzinski gave him three carries for two yards. Add them all up, 96 positive yards, two negative yards, a net of 94 in the running game for Berwick when they had just 22 at halftime. Lonzinski, 7 of 15 passing, no interceptions, 44 yards, all short passing. Trey Wilk gives an idea of the short passing, five catches for a net of 24 yards, uh, and all were positive in there, nothing really losing yards, so just averaging five yards a catch. Benny Knorr had two catches for 20 yards. 44 in the air, 94 on the ground, 138 for Berwick with just one turnover compared to the 103 for the Comets, but their four turnovers were a big part. Very strong defense, Jim. Credit that unit for the win, and uh, credit the coaches for some good halftime moves. Aiden Mason uh, and the Spencer Kishpaugh in particular, plus the line stepping it up. A very exciting game and a very big win for Berwick, Jim. At halftime, you're saying, what's this season going to be? Now, all of a sudden, you're looking at very optimistically. You are indeed, as Berwick wins it here tonight. 14 to 9 is the final. For an update on other scores on this weekend number two of the 2021 season, let's return to the studios of HLM and Raven Klein. Thank you very much, Jim. In high school football this evening, a final Southern Columbia beats Bloomsburg 41 to 0. A final Mifflinburg beats Central Columbia 28 to 0. A final, Danville wins over Midwest, 62-6. to A final, Harrisburg beats Hazleton area, 31-21. to A final in overtime, Dallas wins over Wyoming Valley West, 28-27. to A final, Jersey Shore beats Sealands Grove, 9-7. In the fourth quarter, Shemokin leads Central Mountain, 28-27. to A final, Loyal Sock beats Shikalimi, 42-13. to A final, Milton wins over Warrior Run, 48 to 14. A final, Mount Carmel beat Hughesville, 48 to 20. A final, Montgomery wins over Northwest, 27 to 14. And a final, North Schuylkill beat Blue Mountain, 21 to 14. Back to you, Jim. Okay, thank you very much, Raven. With the loss, Crestwood falls to 0 and 2. They'll be on the road to Tuncanic next Friday night. For the Bulldogs, they go to 1 and 1. They will be here at Crestwood Field against the Cougars of Hazleton area. 7 o'clock kickoff. As usual, our coverage will start with Coach DeFrancesco's show at 6 o'clock. That final again, Berwick 14, Crestwood 9. From Crestwood Field of Berwick for Sports Radio HLM and our producer Raven Klein and Andy Lickney, this is Jim Doyle reminding you you heard it live on Sports Radio HLM. You've been listening to Berwick Bulldogs Football on Sports Radio HLM. Brought to you by First Columbia Bank and Trust with you every step of the way. Forge Pub and Eatery, West 11th Street in Berwick. Bear Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Berwick. Berwick Dental Arts, quality care for your dental health. Berwick Notary Center, Orange Street in Berwick. Mason's Monogram Services for all your Bulldog merchandise. Neighbor Fence Company, residential and commercial fencing. First Keystone Community Bank, yesterday's tradition. Tomorrow's vision. 
Red's Roofing, the roofing ninjas of Berwick for all your home improvements. Yannick Real Estate, commercial and residential. The male funeral homes of Berwick and Shikshini. Your Berwick State Farm agents, Lori Powell, Sean Black, and Melissa Price. Hometown agents who understand Berwick's needs. Riverview Block, Inc. of Berwick. Alexander Family Dealership, Central Road Offered 11 in Bloomsburg. Access Gymnastics Academy, East 7th Street in Bloomsburg. Wells's Towing and Repair, Towing Recovery and Lockout Services. S.J. Kowalski Heating and Cooling, the way the earth intended. Overhead Door Company of Berwick. Independence Ford, Route 11 in Bloomsburg. Don's Towing Truck and Trailer Repair, Route 11 in Berwick. MD Accounting and Consulting, your hometown CPA firm. Lehigh Valley Health Network, your partner for orthopedic and sports medicine care. Fairfield Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Danville. The Berwick Medicine Shop, now at 500 Fowler Avenue in Berwick. And by name brand liquidations in the Berwick Plaza on Route 11. HLM is the Valley Sports Leader. 